Hey. You. Welcome. It's stream time. We're live. And thanks for being here. We're jumping into the Friday stream, finally. I'm a little later than expected because I have some business to take care of because I got some good news. I'm hoping that I'll have something to show you um, regarding the t-shirt on like Monday. Hopefully. Hopefully Monday is the day, but it'll, uh, it'll TBD depending on if I need to take some time to make sure that the, <clears throat> you know, mostly, mostly it's a printing issue. Like I just want to make sure that the printer is good because everything else is done. And we are ready to cook. And I'm very excited to show you something that I can't show. Listen, if I showed you guys what I have already for the t-shirt, one of you would just go put it up on like Redbubble and then, and what would, you know, what would I do? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think that would be possible from OBS. It might be. They can do anything. Hello, Jesus. What's up, Classy Doge? Hello, The Dark. What's up, Blazing Lord Soul? Dorito Chaos? Dragon? Orc? What's up, Autocog? Sergo? More Star Sector? Yeah. We're back. I'm out of new games to play this week. Uh, there was another sort of strategy game that looked interesting um, that someone in chat recommended and I was keeping an eye on it and it, it released, but it seems like one of those strategy games that is meant to be played against other people and not so much against the computer. So I have had to pass on that one. I think it was called Solium Infernum. It looked neat, but it looked like it really like needed people. And the reviews pretty much say the AI sucks. So I just decided not to even try. And there's only one map. By part six, you surely mean new run. I do not know. I mean, uh, it's gonna be new today, but it will be, it'll be new to the run. All the content today. No rock and stone? No, I think, um... Deep Rock Galactic Survivors looks kind of... Not something that interests me. Doesn't doesn't look like my thing. I watched I watched some gameplay of it and it was kind of meh. I I think that the like if I if I may be blunt, I think the only thing carrying it is the Deep Rock Galactic branding. And I think if it if you couldn't say Rock and Stone when you when you looked at it, you wouldn't care about it. Because if you separate it from its heritage as a standalone, it just kind of doesn't look as doesn't look good. It looks it looks fine. Let me put it like that. It looks fine. When I say doesn't look good, I don't mean looks bad. I just mean like I would say if it were if it were stripped of the Deep Rock Galactic branding, you're looking at like a six out of ten survivors like. Just from just from what I watched other people play, but I would say passable. It it works. That's what it would say on the tin. It would be, it would say it works. And sometimes that's all you need. 
but for me, I need something else besides the like. I'm I'm I barely dabbled in the survivors formula, and I'm already bored of it. So, my the two survivors games I care about is Vampire Survivors was cool. Um, I had a good time with it, and then Brotato. <laughs> Personally, I think I prefer Brotato, even though I played Vampire Survivors more. I think Brotato is a better game. So, until somebody can dethrone Brotato in my mind, then I don't need to play it. That's just kind of where I'm at. I don't, I don't feel like a craving day-to-day -to, -day to play more Survivors bullet hell roguelikes. I think it was a great idea and the novelty has sort of already worn off and I'm not really sure how to innovate in the genre Etal hates Deep Rock Galactic and thinks everyone who likes it is stinky <laughs> hey oh space truckers hello space truckers What up, space truck gamers? Bellatro's my favorite survivor's life. Bellatro's good. It's it's fine. I thought I thought it was fun. But um I got I got my fun out of it. I I won once and then I was like, okay, I'm done. I beat the game. That's all there is. Roll the credits. GG's. So I'm not sure, like, what the last roguelike that I got, like, super addicted to was. I don't know. There's not a lot of them, to be honest. I think I think I um, am a, a difficult person to please in the roguelike genre. I think part of that's just... Part of that's just me. I think I like longer form games anyways. I prefer games that don't really get released anymore. Like, you're into the Gungeons. You're Risky Rain 2's. Risk, Risky Rain 2 is good. It frustrated me, but I respect it. If that makes sense. I didn't like the meta progression of Risky Rain 2, but I like the gameplay a lot. I would give Risky Rain 2 gameplay high marks and meta progression low marks. The little like blue orb store was kind of lame. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm here for Gungeon. I'm here for Risky Rain Two. I'm here for Hades. Um, I'm okay. Yeah, I agree with like story based roguelikes. I also vibe with like Returnal was a transformative experience for me. I love that. So yeah, I like the genre. I I can name at least four or five games that I like really love. Um. What's the what's chat the pixel one? <laughs> Dead cells. Dead cells I also really like. I'd put that up there too. So yeah, if you, if you can name at least 5 games in a genre, then you like the genre. I'm curious what my like most I, I'm sure it's Slay the Spire. I think Slay the Spire is probably my most played roguelike. Kind of curiously looking at my own most played games to see what's on my Steam list. Alright. Mass Effect. Chill. Yeah, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is my most played roguelike. Man, it's not even close. And then after that, you have to go way down and then it's Into the Gungeon. Here's the thing. I regard Into the Gungeon more highly than Slay the Spire. I don't know how I played multiple hundreds of hours of Slay the Spire because I thought it was fun but it's not, it's not something it's like eating pizza every single day for six months you know like I love pizza but after I've eaten pizza every day for six months I don't want to eat pizza anymore it was good but I don't know how I ate pizza every day for multiple hundreds of hours Darkest Dungeon's up there for me. I didn't put that much time in Darkest Dungeon, but I liked the first one a lot. Yeah. 
uh, faster than light. Of course, every every streamer who's been in the game for long enough has got FTL on the list somewhere. I have a thousand hours in the Binding of Isaac. That's a lot of hours. I bet you still had to use the wiki to see what item was what. What's up, Kentaro? How's it going, dude? But yeah, I think I, I, I find I'm looking for very specific things in the roguelike genre. It's much easier to appease me in the survival crafting genre. You just need a really solid gameplay loop. I do like hidden trees. I do like hidden rocks with tools. I like upgrading those tools. And I like making a cozy little base. I enjoy all of those gameplay mechanics. That being said, there have been a lot of survival games lately that I have felt very judgmental about. I have to admit, I've gotten picky. Talks, what RPGs do you like? Um, most recently, big fan of Baldur's Gate. No, you don't have to beat the game to say that it's one of your favorites, okay? Um, Cyberpunk. 2077 has been great fun. I haven't beaten that, but I did beat the DLC. Yes, you do. No, you don't. You don't have to you don't have to clean your plate, mom, okay? Like I I eat until I am full and I don't stuff myself. You don't have to clean the plate to be able to say that the meal was good. I think you need to be at least an act 2. I am an act 2. Bitch. Thank you. Now sit down. <sighs> Noita was fun. Noita was fun. I agree. But anyway, older RPGs. Let me see. Older RPGs. Let me look at my game list. There's not a lot of RPGs that I have hundreds of hours in, which makes sense. I gotta, I gotta scroll real far down. <laughs> There's not a lot of RPGs. I guess I... I don't really regard Skyrim... I regard Skyrim highly, but not reverently. Let's put it like that. Disco Elysium. Uh, it would for sure be Disco Elysium... And I like, I don't know if we call, we're considering ARPGs. Yeah, Mass Effect, of course. All of, well, I didn't play three, but one and two. Um, Fallout New Vegas. I don't know if we consider Dark Souls or Demon Souls an RPG, but if so, Demon Souls. Uh, yeah, th there's quite a lot. I like RPGs a lot, actually. I even play the bad ones. I finished Starfield. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, I, I really like RPGs. Big RPG fan. I think I would like a lot of JRPGs, too. The problem is, I don't like playing games by myself. Solo. Like, alone. You know how some people, you guys are like, I don't like silence. I just need music to get the empty space out of my head. For me, the empty space enters my head when I'm playing a game by myself. Because 99.5% of the rest of the time I'm playing a game by myself. No, you're not in my room, I hope. Midas is. And uh, he gave up on trying to get under the blankie. But... It's that's why there's silence because I just don't I don't talk like right now. I'm I'm talking. We're just hanging out. We're chatting like there's I'm I'm vocalizing if I play a game by myself. It's just like It's just it's too quiet The silence creeps in you know, like that for me, that's the terrible silence that I need to escape from. So I like playing with other people. I like playing anything with anyone else. 
I don't like playing games with myself. <laughs> I felt like the start to an anti-depression medication ad. <laughs> Do you narrate your gameplay off stream? No. But yeah, I as a okay. My point was that's why I haven't played a lot of the RPGs that I think I would actually like. Like for example, all of the Yakuza games. Some of those are RPGs, if not all of them. I think I'd really enjoy them. Um, I I think I would really like. That entire series of games, I just can't bring myself to start it because I had to play... And I ain't gonna stream all the Yakuza games. That's like 600 hours. That'd be like 60 back-to-back -back streams. I don't think we could hack it. I'm stun-locked. So I can't play them off-stream either. There's a lot of games like that. That I think I would love to play. Like, for example, the God of War sequel, dude. The God of War sequel. I haven't played it. I love God of War, but I'm not going to stream the sequel, and I also don't want to play it by myself. Anyway, last night... Uh, Ray with a bunch of E's. Thanks for 40 months if you're out there somewhere. I think I missed that sub last night, possibly. If you're out there, thanks for subbing. I appreciate it. We need to remember what the heck is going on in our campaign. Because I don't remember. Uh, I had queued up a trip. This is the sound redemption to here, presumably to do a mission. There's a bounty. How are you not out of channel points yet? One day you're going to need those channel points, so you're not going to have any. Then what are you going to do? Think about how much more you could have gambled on the next prediction. Think about that. Okay. Uh, where do where were we? I know we have uh did I just accidentally cancel that. I did. I know we have our own planets now. So we have two colonies. We have our capital of Stray Dog. And we have our secondary mining colony of house cats. So we got both of those, and we're trying to grow them today. And ideally, we're trying to grow them so that they can make some money. Because right now, they're kind of just costing me money. And I'm losing a lot of money. So we last left off building the farming industry. Because uh, what this should do is hopefully tap into the agricultural uh, plus, this is just going to be plus food, right? Or no, it's going to be plus money, basically. It'll make food as well. So hopefully this will give us more credits per month. We're at 2780 credits per month. I can also turn off hazard pay. I'm basically subsidizing the work on this planet to incentivize the growth rate. So we're at 3.33% growth. If I turn that off, it goes down to 2.5, but we do make... 5k extra credits a month which is not a lot um it's probably worth keeping the growth for now but it's gonna go real slow i don't know maybe i should turn it off temporarily okay fine i'll turn it off temporarily i'm, I'm talking myself into it because ideally here's what we need to do we need to build farming which is 60 days away and then we have a tech mining industry that has been digging through the planetary ruins, which are vast. 
The planet we settled is covered in ruins. Cities, factories, mines, farms, homes. The dead are in dread abundance. They were picking through their things and trying to get loot. So we already found some loot that paid for the industry. And now we're on borrow time because the more that you search the ruins, the less bountiful they become until they basically become empty. So we're trying to wait for them to become empty. These ruins have been combed through, but the chance of a new find still remains. So that line will change when they're basically running dry. And uh, then we're gonna need to replace tech mining with something else. So to do any shipbuilding today, we're going to need a few things. We need a heavy industry, first of all. I believe this is going to be helping us produce a lot of heavy machinery, supplies, guns, and ships, basically. That's going to be one of the ones that we really want. Capable of producing space-worthy, barely space-worthy starships. A nanoforge can be installed to improve quality. We have a corrupted nanoforge, so we do have something. But we're going to need an upfront cost of 500,000 credits, which we only have a million right now. And we're losing a lot real fast, and it's going to be pretty high upkeep. So on my other colony, House Cat, this is our mining colony. We're losing a lot of credits because hazard pay here is crazy expensive. So we might back off the hazard pay once we hit another growth threshold. We're at 47% on that. So once we pop over to the next growth threshold, then maybe we'll t turn down hazard pay for a little while and, and work on saving some money. But this place is mining and it's doing great. Uh, we have volatiles, we have basic ore, and we have rare ore. All at the same time. Lots of vol volatiles and lots of basic ore. And uh, the hazard is like, not great, not terrible. Not great, not terrible. But we're, we're producing these and this should be making uh, some monthly money for us. We're exporting 21,000 credits worth of minerals. And we can also kind of turn around and chat. How, those Are there any Star Sector experts in the chat who can tell me the interaction um, between producing your own resources and using your own resources? Does that actually save you money or does it just guarantee that the resources are accessible and not being interrupted by pirates who are sniping your trade fleets that are coming in? Because I know the second thing is definitely the biggest advantage. You don't, you're don't, you not worried about import. So you don't have to worry about getting, uh, like, missing a delivery. But I'm not sure if it's, if they lose money. Like, cause here's the thing that's unclear, right? You make money from mining, but you're not spending any money on importing things. The people are just doing that themselves. I don't like does more imports equal less credits per month? Because I don't think so. I think it just means you're not making money from the export. You make money from export, but you don't spend money on imports. It only costs you money to manually provide supply. True. Yeah. You can do that manually. Anyway. What did somebody in chat ask a question? Do you use the Steam Notes feature? No, because it's too slow. The UI is too slow. Anyway, we're going to just try and get to the next growth, get a new industry slot. We only have one industry right now, and we'll start making some more money. And maybe when we have that settled, we'll think about settling a third planet. So for now, we have to make a decision. Do we want to actually go do this bounty? We're only going to get 180,000 credits for doing the bounty, and we're going to spend more than that going there and back. <laughs> That's sort of the downside. Uh, it is expensive for us to fly because our fleet is a gas-guzzling fleet. Uh, we're rocking the flagship, which is this delicious carrier that we were able to pick up. I believe this is the Astral. Yeah, Astral class carrier. I didn't name this. We need to give our flagship a proper name. While you're doing that, I'm going to fast forward the music. There we go. So we have songs that are a little less unpleasantly scary and spooky. 
All right, we got the Gauntlet Runner. This is not named either. The Rocking Chair. Because they're so slow. They're like get off my lawn ships, you know? Oh, we can we can rename. We have a faction now. Oh boy. Okay, let me do that. Because our faction is called um... Chat. What? <laughs> what is our faction called? Hello. Hello. Yes, I am the leader of the faction. What did I name you? <laughs> the Byzantine Empire. With B I Z, because our leader's name is Bizlock Brannigan. So we took the first three letters of his name and made it into the Empire name. All right, so it's the uh, B I Z something. The B I Z. The B I Z. The Biz Loads O Money. Loads of money! <laughs> Reminds me of uh, Killing Floor. The Beehive with capital E. The Coin Purse. Because it has a bunch of fighters that fall out of it. Okay, I like it. The Biz Coin Purse. Also a sign of our wealth. I wish you could, like, click a character here. Oops, instead of typing the whole thing again. We got the rocking chair and the... Um... <clears throat> the patio door. Doesn't have to... Don't worry about it. The biz... Rocking chair... The Biz Wizard, that's just a good name. The Biz Pops. The Pac-Man. Biz Amidala. The Biz Shield. The Biz Warlock. We got some cool code. We never gave a code name to this one. The Biz, um... Something. The Majestic Space Pancake. If you hit Generate Name button, it'll replace the prefix without changing the ship's name the first time you click it. I'll try that out, but I need to rename this one. Ah, the Biz... What does this ship do? It has a little, a little couple fighters in the fighter bay, and it's got two medium slot weapons and a small missile. So it's got more, like, it has more armament compared to its size than most other ships, basically. I'm... The coffee net, Ter terrible, but it is kind of, <clears throat> I might just call it the net. The shrimp. Chat, what's an animal that has other animals pick bugs off of it while it is chilling? Hippos. Crocodile or hippo? Alright, there's gonna be the biz croc. We'll go crocodile. Because it, it's got some snap. It's got some bite. Okay, so chat says do this. Alright, it does change it. You're right, you're right. So we can do bug zapper. This one we didn't name. 10,000 light years. Um... This is going to be the Biz Sparkler. The Biz Small Loan. This is going to be the Biz... Payback. We didn't name this either. This is going to be the Biz Manta.
the biz. This is like a, a stealth hauling vessel. Uh, this is going to be the biz marketplace stall. <laughs> um, the biz. Chat's still on animal names. Why are you guys still doing animal names? The biz mark for some big ship. Ship works? I hope it does. Nice. A totally legit business. <laughs> There's a lot of them. What, animals? Names of animals? There are a lot of names of animals. All right. The biz... Corner store. Pop-up. Pop-up something. What do you call, like, a pop-up store? The back room deal? Okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh, we got the Biz Wow, the Biz Homie, the Biz Big Rig, the Biz Beyond This Point, and the Biz... Remember the Bizmar. I did not name that one. <laughs> the Biz... Siphon. The Biz Dumpster Diver. The Biz Claw Game, and we're good to go. Sick. Okay, you know what? I say we check our inventory. Inventory do be kind of full. We check... Uh, did, I, did I already buy all the fuel at Lilu here? Because we need some fuel. I'm losing money, chat. We're gonna be losing a lot of money because of, uh, I have a custom start, exclamation star sector, I think should still work. We're paying a lot of debt because of our Nexarellan starting conditions and uh, it scales up with your level to keep the challenge ever increasing. And now it has gotten just, I would, I would describe it as exorbitant. It's become exorbitant. Okay, to make... Ooh, we got some stuff we need to put up. Hello, Hegemony. I wanted to give you a gift. I have a present for you. Alright, we have good relationship. We have favorable relationship with the Hegemony, so that's nice. Do we have enough supplies? We have 1,600 supplies. Alright, we good. Let's uh, let's take a pit stop home. Back to our original. Well, okay. <clears throat> For context, our home is in Amon. We settled this, and the best part about this is this is the closest I have ever colonized to core space. We have a randomized spawn with uh, with next. Amon ended up being the best system to settle, and it also just happened to be. Not even the furthest system that the game spawned in with. Morgana is where we where we spawned in at the beginning of our campaign, and we settled two systems away. <laughs> uh, it's never happened to me before, ever in Star Sector. I'm usually on the fringe of space. Somewhere so far removed from civilization that it's, like, annoying. And for once, I'm actually conveniently located for both myself and also AI traders and NPCs who are who are newman around. What are you doing? Maintaining contact with your fleet. Get out of here, pirates! Get out of here! Who is this? You thought you could e-burn away from me? Hovering around my system? I don't think so. All right, you got a light strike cruiser. Uh, modified, modified pirate freighter and some other trash. We'll definitely be able to get the, the big boys, but the, the hounds and stuff will probably get away. 
I'm gonna take command of this action. We need a, who's our fastest cruiser? It's probably the Aurora and the Fury. The Shrike is decently fast. The Medusas are decently fast. The Scarab is theoretically fast and the Tempest. And then we'll get the Wolves in too. And that should be more than enough. Let's deploy the Wolves on the left and right. Okay, so we have some people coming in from the sides. And then for my first order of business, we're gonna have the Tempest capture the nav buoy, which is lovely, because that'll give us a speed boost. I don't really need a comm relay. They can have that. <clears throat> All right, I, I'm usually like in a different uh, spot. I'm gonna take over As the Shrike. I'll just be a little destroyer guy. He usually takes four streams to find the best system to settle. Somewhat true. Alright, we're gonna try and like eliminate this dude and this dude. And that dude and that dude. And we're gonna kind of like dive, dive on them a little bit. Get them, little lasers. Alright, I'm kind of getting attacked by a whole bunch of nerds. What do I have? A heavy blaster? Yeah, I got a heavy blaster. Okay, so anyway, I'm trying to get the guys who are getting away, like this tanker. And then once the tanker is gotten, then it's just a matter of, like, I would say, engaging the cruisers... And the destroyers on the fringe. Nice try, nerd. Alright, I have Sabos. But yeah, they're kinda they're kinda surrounded right now. So they're just like giving each other some cover while my dudes kinda move in. Uh I think we killed the Dram and everybody else is resetting. I don't wanna be the first one in as the Shrike. Nice snipes. All right, trying to kind of like punch through his armor on the side. And he is got a lot of it. There we go. Now we're starting to get through the armor. Much larger explosions. Good job, team. You guys are extremely efficient. I like my high-tech fleet. It's been doing good. We got the whole pirate fleet. I have a skill point. Oh no, that means my debt just went up. <laughs> colony crisis? Hostile ships destroy- Oh, we have a colony crisis. Do we? A crisis is virtually inevitable at some point and hostile fleets continually probe your defense, but where there's danger, there is often opportunity. Uh, danger minimal? Primary threats, Ludic Path, and Pirates. Monthly factors, blowback. Actions that postpone a crisis often have unintended consequences and cause their own problems in the long run. Ultimately, crises cannot be avoided and must instead be dealt with and exploited for the opportunities they provide. 5% per month to event progress. And will also increase the value that progress is reset to after a crisis. Pirate activity, colony presence, and instability. Um, having Kenta's protection should be enough to dissuade most pirates from attacking your interests. Does that just mean being friendly with the pirates? I like the crisis system, but they need to maybe emphasize some of the non-combat options to deal with them. What have I? What have I told you, chat before? Star Sector is a, a game that is a sandbox, but that you're supposed to fight in. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, that is sort of the, the way that it's kind of always been, I would say. We talked about this a lot previously. 
you're you're sort of supposed to do combat. So I'm sure that that is somewhat intentional. Even if I would agree with you. One of the settlements is in need of your assistance. Also, what's up, Nomad BT? How's it going, dude? This is my favorite shop on the Citadel. Turn the music up some. And uh, we got Ludic Path technology and core use. Use of advanced tech and AI cores attracts the attention of pathers. Advanced technology and artificial intelligence are anathema to the Ludic Path. Most of the Pather fleets are small, engaging in reconnaissance, demanding tithes from unwary travelers, but occasionally a larger raiding force makes an appearance. It's possible you might reach some kind of understanding with the Pathers, provided you find the right people to talk to. You know what, screw you, I'm gonna blow you up. <laughs> Who's this? That has gotta be a bad dude also. What are you guys hovering outside my, my, uh, my colony for, dude? All right, this one, this one we definitely also win. We just gotta go all in on this one, though. I'm sending the coin purse, my flagship. I don't take chances. Okay, step one, cap the nav buoys in the comm relay. Step two, make a push for the sensor jammer also. And step three, let's get our uh, pairs set up. I like to, I like to use escort a lot. And the way that I found that that works pretty well is I have some omens, three AI piloted omens who are running interference for enemy missiles and fighters, and I usually attach those to the um, either the cruisers or the destroyers, depending on how I want it to roll. What, how do I want it to roll? Let's send them with the cruisers. So you, uh, the Light Fury gets one. <clears throat> this Eagle gets one. And this Eagle gets one. I like to send the Wolves with the Medusas. Okay. Scarab kind of has to go by himself and just try not to die. I think. This Medusa is a point defense Medusa. I can tell because it's unpiloted. And uh, I usually send somebody with the Shrike. So you go with the Shrike. And then the Tempest usually gets killed. So I know the Tempest is the fastest, but the Tempest also always dies. So I'm gonna send that with um, the other cruiser and then I'm chilling. I'm just gonna be out and about doing my own thing. All right, let's go. So here's all my babies. I have six fighter groups. One squadron sends Sabo missiles to try to take down shields. One sends torpedoes. The other one sends a, a dumb fire missile launch. Tempest, I'm doing my part. Hello, Antipodium. What's up, Bobonski? Okay, it takes me a while to get into the action. I'm slow. I'm a little sluggish. Alright, so when I see enemy ships out of position trying to cap points, we pounce on those. Eliminate orders. Try to thin them out immediately. And then regroup from there. They already got one, so... That's done. So I'm here, kind of moving up. They're trying to pounce on that dude. And we managed to get the sensor jammer as well, which gives us ECM rating. Effectively, if we have higher ECM rating, then their weapon range will be reduced, so we'll be able to shoot them from further than they can shoot us, which is pretty good. Why are both of my, my eagles over here, though, guys? You don't need to be over there.
Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set an engage order because I got two of my cruisers around their overdriven cruiser. So we're gonna just do an engage order on that cruiser. I'd like to engage that dude as well. And then I'd like to maybe set up like a defend order at this waypoint and rally everyone else so they're not just like floating aimlessly in space over here. Start moving to be helpful. Tempest, behave yourself. Alright, Astral's coming in. We're about to start being useful. Let's go ahead and get shields up. And I'm going to go ahead and send my fighters out and start some uh, suppressive missiles. He's in range. Squadrons, confirm kill, bring them home. I have an ability with the Astral called the Recall Device that's special to the Astral that lets me insta-teleport all of my fighters home so I can just bring them back and redeploy. We got another little friendo here. All right, we're losing a few fighters this time. But the Eagles are here, which is lovely. All right, we're going to take the defense order off. Execute that kite. I'd like to go ahead and engage here. Probably execute that dude since he's just out of position. And then everybody else should be gaming. This guy's also almost dead. Put an execute on him. All right, that's good. All right, they got some big ships coming in, but we've got some nice support from our cruisers. All right, I'm bringing the fighters back. Nicely done. All right, we're definitely squishing all these nerds. But we got two more command points, so let's go ahead and eliminate this mule. We're already eliminating that. And then I'd say... Eliminate, eliminate, and engage. He's a tanky boy. Couple of torpedoes up the tailpipe will slow him down. Now his engines are out. <laughs> You're getting a little close there. Good kills. All right, combat readiness is going to start decreasing soon. That's not so bad. Let's go ahead and get an engage on the venture and eliminate the rest of the trash. And then that should be it. Our double squall MLRS barrage is quite effective at what it does. Setting up for our, uh, our fighters to come in. Oop. Everybody's pouncing on him, man. Good fight. Well done. That was a two-star battle, but I, I knew that we were going to win that, but it was still a two-star battle. Who got away? You nerds, I don't feel like chasing you. You can't do anything. Totally butchered. Thanks for the supplies. Minus 14 to Colony Crisis. Yeah, that was a big fleet, huh? That one has been maybe harassing some people we just didn't know. To the home system. What's up, Gilmadesh? 
I didn't think about piloting a carrier. That'd be a good bet for me considering I suck at piloting ships in combat in this game. Uh, yeah, the carrier still requires you to be kind of attentive to whether you're losing too many fighters because you can't just leave them on engage full time. And it's also difficult if you find yourself like, okay, if you want to play carrier, you need to be good at basically manipulating the map orders. What I mean is you need a lot of support and you need to know when you're in too deep or when you need to hang back and if you need people to kind of like give you some escort. So it's, it's easy to get in over your head as a carrier because you're so slow. You can't really like respond to being out of position. You just have to like bring people to you. Who's this? Engaged in battle. There's Ludic. I will, I will jump in to assist the Byzantine force. They just have an overdriven destroyer. Okay, we'll just send both of our destroyers, the Tempest, and a couple wolves. Should be enough by themselves. Let's go, baby. All right, the big dog is down. They, uh, they, they thought that they could pilfer the chicken coop. They thought they could just sneak in when nobody's home. And take some of our eggs. <laughs> okay, I don't know where this analogy is going. <laughs> They're interrupting my trade fleets. That's what we're going to fix today. We're going to start making our own patrol fleets. That'll be able to hopefully project some power and defend the system, you know? All right, are you guys retreating? I thought they only had one destroyer. Now they have two? Good job with the overload. Ooh, that was an unfortunate torpedo. Gotta catch those guys, they're getting away. Okay, but they've been mostly defanged. We got both of the destroyers. So I don't really feel like pursuing them if I don't have to. Not good salvage. All right, anyway, hello, Stray Dog. We're home. I came back because I need to store some stuff. Dude, yeah, we got some, we got some, uh... These must be from the tech, right? The supplies probably came from, like, the tech mining and the fuel. Probably don't need the heavy machinery. We got seven high-value prisoners. Didn't know I was making a prison world. Okay, anyway, what's up, Grulon? Hello, Sinless Moon. Thanks for 23 months of sub. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream and happy Friday, everybody. You made it to the weekend. Will the debt eventually be paid? Nope. That is that is doesn't have a function. Also, first sub of the day, Sinless Moon. So thanks for sharing your prime. Ace to welcome to stream. Star C actor, you tried. <laughs> you gave it a shot. Uh, this is our current like garage fixer upper. We have some big guns that we could bring to bear if we so were motivated. This is some salvage that we've found while we've been exploring. We've got, we've got some firepower. Uh, four capital ships here, which are extremely solid, but very expensive. Uh, another Aurora, which I'm quite pleased with the performance of our Aurora. 
I got a champion if I wanted. I've got another eagle. I've got another... I, I think the fury has been decent. It's been nice because it's fast. I think we just have a really balanced fleet comp right now. And I'm about the peak of what I can support. I can't really add more jumbo ships. I can still put five ships in the fleet, but just like monetarily, I don't think I can support more. We, can, we can't really support this. But I'm quite... I feel like we have a good balance. Um, the eagles are this backbone. Just hold the line. The aurora can move into strike with the... Uh, triple heavy blasters. The, uh, the fury can give us some nice ion beam support. Anti-armor has good point defense, actually. Like the burst PD and then a little pulse laser to keep some pressure up. And uh, the shrike has actually been okay in the hands of our pilot. The Medusas really shine. I've been, I love the Medusas. They're, they're one of my favorite ships in the game. And then the Astral is also just like coming in like a... The, the Astral is like a giant bulldozer coming in to destroy a site. And all of the pirates who get in the way are like linked arms across... <laughs> okay, this is not a good analogy. I'm just imagining it slits. It's just slowly moving towards the enemies, and it will destroy them. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. How do you outfit your Shrike? It's mostly about giving the Shrike some support. I always give the Shrike an escort of something. But uh, it's just set up for PD, Sabos, and Heavy Blaster. And uh, it has 12 missiles plus expanded missile racks plus missile spec. So they can just spam Sabos the entire round and never run out. So it's just pew, 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 and then Heavy Blaster pressure. And then just give them like an escort that can do damage. And then they, they work well together, it seems. But I also have hardened shields built in. So I got a lot of vents, mid capacitors, hardened shields with an S mod. And that gives them a lot of extra tankiness. 20% shield damage reduction. Seems like it's been working for me because I haven't had to repair that ship at all. I've had to repair the Tempest and the Wolves, but I don't think we've had to repair the Shrike, maybe, maybe once? Okay, anyway, I was stopping here to kind of drop off some supplies. We ought to go. We have 52 days. I say this isn't really even... 180k is the reward for this bounty. Which is not really even going to pay for the travel costs. However, it might pay us enough to justify going and exploring that region of space. And pop... I just lost $100,000 in monthly expenses. <laughs> That's why I'm in a bit of a rush. Bit of a rush. The uh, the obligation debt start accounts of 37000 So that's hurting us. We're paying 20 k for administrator duties. But the administrator duties will pay for themselves eventually. Um, we're breaking even on planets, and we're paying a lot to our... We have a huge officer lineup with a lot of high-level officers, so they're really expensive. All right, let's go. We got 8,000 fuel. We have plenty of fuel and 1,700 supplies, so I'm hoping that that's enough to kind of sustain us. But we have less than eight months to live. Because <laughs> they gotta pay 100k a month. Maintaining contact with your fleet. You're welcome to try me, you big dumb nerd. There's a lot of pirate fleets in here. Pretty similar to mine, but I have PD targeting unit built in and give it IR lasers. I like how many different builds you can do. There's a lot of ships that can fill a lot of different gaps in your lineup. And I think part of the fun of the ship design process is trying to figure out like, 
how you can use it in possibly a different way that meets your specific needs. Because I know I play a lot different than a bunch of people. Tons of people will live and die by safety overrides. And I almost never use safety overrides because it's just not my play style. My play style is longer battles that uh, need that peak operating time. And just kind of floating around and, and big bodying the bad guys. Whereas other people are like, safety overrides, can't live without it. I put it on every ship and I need, I gotta go fast. Gotta go fast and I gotta go strong. Which, totally fair. All right, there's a bounty here. Rumored to be hiding out near a barren desert world in a system with an orange primary star. Okay, let's check, let's check this place out. The dollar system. Got a barren world, a desert world, and a barren world. Hold on, what did it say? It, they're in a barren desert. So there are barren and desert, but not barren desert here. Okay. Then let's go... There is another orange star. Let's go to that one instead. Go, ships, what are you doing? I got a click for you? <laughs> I gotta do everything myself? What am I, the captain? Ooh, a probe. What else we got here? Oh, barren desert world. Right there. Is right there, chat. I bet they're just waiting outside. Another probe. All right, so we're at least gonna get some loot here. There you are. Pursue. Oh, that's a big fleet, dude. Um, okay. Are we good? Is everybody good? This is going to be a three-star all-hands-on-deck situation. They just got a lot of meat. And a lot of fighters. I've been having a uh, fun zooming around in a wolf while learning the game. Might be my favorite ship so far. Yeah, the wolf is a lot of fun. It's stronger in the <clears throat> player's hands, for sure. A lot of carriers. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is... We're going to pick off their freighters. Chad, do their super freighters have a carrier slot each? And then they've got a bunch of little... they got a bunch of small carriers as well. And then they have the one... They have one battleship pirate ship. But we have just much better cruisers than them. Don't worry, I'm coming to you. Alright, we got... The coin purse capital. We got one, two, three, four cruisers coming out. All the Medusas. We're going to have to do like a multi-pronged deployment here. So I need to get my escorts out first. And then we're going to bring the fighters in once we get some more deployment points. Regens. And then we'll get, we'll get four frigates reinforced. The problem is I need... Maybe I need one frigate. Like the Tempest to just go catch... The first we'll get to the first two points it's not really that bad it's a pretty glorious high-tech fleet though yeah i think our fleet has come together in a very strong way it really surprised me how how co cohesive my fleet became i set out to do high-tech but we just kind of got lucky with really great salvage so that's a big part of it Okay, I'm going to send the point defense. Destroyer. With the Aurora, I think this time. And then I usually send a wolf with the Shrike. Hopefully the Shrike lives long enough. 
All right, then you go with you. You go with you. You go with you. And then the Medusas usually are chilling. I haven't really had any problem with the Medusas yet. But yeah, we'll rebuild deployment points and we'll be able to bring in some reinforcements here. We also cap points really fast. So they just have to kind of like touch close to them and then... Oh, we really need the nav buoy. The nav buoy should be a priority, 100%. We need the speed. All right, we have 38 points because I guess cap capturing these also gives you deployment points. So, reinforce. Bring in the frigates. And I'm gonna send the wolf with you. A wolf with you. And the tempest. With you. And they'll catch up. The 17 or so salvaged atlases didn't hurt either. Yeah, we've had some really good salvage. All right, we actually were able to snipe the nav buoy away from them, <laughs> which is very good. Uh, I wasted a command point taking it though, so I need to make sure I always have at least one command point available. I'd like to wait until I generate a third to issue some elimination orders. We're kind of roasting and toasting one of their destroyers. Which saves me an order anyway. Yeah, we already kind of eliminated the people I was gonna say eliminate. And then we need to work our way through to the meat and potatoes. Like, this mule class freighter needs to just be murdered. And then engage here. And then engage here. <clears throat> I'd say. Let's kind of focus our, our attacks on this side, close to the carrier. Getting fried, man. Look at the range on the eagle. <laughs> I really like this eagle build. It's a it's a sniper and it's kind of mean. Look at it. It's murdering these helpless frigates by zapping their engines. They can't do anything. Okay, I'm like here. kind of going up the middle they got a lot of fighters and missiles here we got our this is why we have a point defense uh medusa by the way it has double fighter missiles and it has if you can look over one two three four burst lasers and then rear pds as well and it has the medium slot burst so it is just a zapping machine all right let's go ahead and close ourselves up here. I don't like how far this dude's retreating. They're kind of pulling our forces further away than I'd like. I don't know if it's worth using an order here or not. I really don't like the fact that we have this much committed to just chasing this Falcon and his friends. We got all of this to deal with here. I'd say just leave it. It's probably fine. Just let it play out a little bit. We're absolutely shredding their weak little fighters. And then this is where we need to be careful. All right, I'm gonna go for the big dog. We're trading. All right, nice opening volley. Let's bring him back and repopulate. We already got this dude overloaded.
See if we can finish him off with a little uh, missile volley. He's got like one HP. <laughs> There we go. That's more like it. All right, let me take a look at what's going on here. So this flying coffin vanguard needs to be engaged. Uh, go ahead and just kill this guy. And then we just kind of need to like uh, close in on their chunguses. And we kind of just need to close the vice around them, I'd say. You're venting right now on me? Oh, we're in regroup. I forgot that my fighters were just out there kind of dying. So this is where I got to be careful not to get too, too engaged. Alright, we popped them with an overload, but nobody's really around to punish that, unfortunately. We got an eagle on the right. There's still some dudes up here who could be problematic. I don't understand why this eagle redeployed to get the sensor jammer. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you, it's it's under control, eagle. You can you can definitely do something else up here, bro. You're just way out of position. Alright, this dude's trying to kind of like run interference for his boy. And he's overloaded. Let's try and hit him with some nukes. Almost got him. The other barrage wasn't quite good enough, but he's overloaded again. Get him, Eagle! Don't let up! It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Alright, forget about this stupid point. You guys are you guys have got it. You've got it under control, alright? You don't need to just be hovering around there. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to engage this nerd. I need you to murder the car the small carrier. I need you to murder the gremlin. I need you to engage over here, kill that guy, and kill that guy. All right, we got we got plenty plenty to go around. They don't really need those orders, but I, I'd like to kind of accelerate things. Do I need to come in here? Get them, boys. A tanky guy. Extremely tanky. Okay, I mean, wrap it up. <laughs> Close them out. Collect the bounty and let's go. This has been a this was a three star fight, by the way. So this wasn't a foregone conclusion, but uh, we are very effective. One of them got away. The Falcon is just too fast. We don't have a ton of speed compared to like a overdriven Falcon. So that's like the only, as long as that's not the bounty person, I don't think it was. The bounty person was one of these guys. Yeah, it was that dude. Okay, we got the bounty, so I'm just gonna let the Falcon go.
180k. Relationship with Sindri and Dicta improved. Very nice. Very nice. What's up, Durf on Turf? I Dwarp. We got some good combat right at the beginning of this stream. Whoa, Jess is here for 12 months. Hi, Whoa, Jess. Sorry, I was in the middle of a fight. But welcome back. A year? How's it been a year already? How you doing, Whoa, Jess? 50 Ford is also here. Uh, Yay, Star Sector's back. Glad you're excited. And thanks for the tier three sub, 50 Ford. Uh, thanks for five subs in one, dude. Huge support. Thanks for dropping it for another month. And the golden fish is as big old 71. How high does this number go? Over 100, according to other chatters. But welcome to the stream, golden fishy. We got started with the gameplay early today. No 45 minute rants. I was just like, let's go. I got stuff I want to do. I want to get my base all set up. We can recover the Atlas Combat Modified Super Freighter. I don't think that's a great idea. But it is funny that we could have the pirate capital ship and just fly that. Vengeance fleet? Oh, did it say there was a vengeance fleet? Hold on. Yeah, I don't think we want to recover their stinky version. Hephaestus? More squalls? Some more supplies? Alright, we just salvaged that wreckage. Where did it say, um... Vengeance Fleet Level 1, Pirates, launches in 16 days. Due to your reputation with the Pirates, an Enforcer Fleet is being prepared. Assigned to seek you out and eliminate you, if possible. It will launch from an unknown location in 16 days. Well, well, well. I say bring it on, you stupid nerds. Do your worst. Meanwhile, while we're out here, we just kind of paid for the trip, sort of. We can do some salvaging. Here's a Domain Era probe. The Domain sent out probes everywhere looking for habitable worlds. And uh, now we can explore them. The probe's memory banks are partially accessible, contain information pointing to the location of a Domain Era survey ship. Nice. Survey ships are good loot. But the probes themselves aren't super valuable, as you can see. But while you're here, you may as well break them apart and then salvage the wreckage. Because, you know, it's, it's free. Why not? They even send free salvage your way. Aren't the pirates nice? They are so considerate. Alright, but I am still paying 98k a month. That, that number went down. Hold on, Stray Dog's making a little bit more money. Oh, because I turned off hazard pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's another probe. We managed to find some Class 3 survey data that's not very valuable. And I'll be taking your free stuff as well. But yeah, so we're just gonna kinda like probe around this system. Look for any POI. There's really like only the. Is there only one planet here? See, I'd like to just go check around the star, maybe. Well, yeah, my goal today is to hopefully start the actual shipworks proper and uh, start producing our own fleets. All right, nothing really here, unless it's in the asteroid field around the edge, which is unlikely, but technically possible. So I'll give it one cursory check. Wait, diplomatic blunder? Byzantine Empire and Tritachian. Now at minus 10, suspicious. Wait, wait, wait. My faction is just doing relation things in the background? That's worrisome. A diplomatic faux pas by a Tritachian delegate has caused a grave offense to the Byzantine Empire officials at House Cat. Whereas official statements by the hegemony praised the Byzantine Empire for its assistance in foiling a terrorist plot at Abraxas Mantle, relationship improved to welcoming. Interesting.
Hi, chat. What's up, Feng Shui? Also... Also... Whoa, Jess, what have you been playing lately? Playing some Bellatro. Good, good choice. Very good choice. I hope the stream's been going well. Hope the gaming's been good. Thanks for popping in, sharing a sub. And also, chat, if you haven't already checked out Wojess, maybe uh, drop them a follow by clicking the link in the chat. While we... go ahead and survey these systems. Chat, did I even survey the planet in the other system? I forgot. It was a barren... De I gotta go... Now I gotta go back. Ugh. The Vengeance Fleet has been launched from Sark. It will pursue you for at least two months. Oh, it's is that the survey ship? <laughs> That's whose location we just scraped from the databanks? Alright, let's survey this planet first. I'll take some ruins. I'll salvage some planetary ruins. Okay, well they sucked, so... Your fleet approaches a Domain Era survey ship left from the initial exploration of the sector. The ancient Domain Era automated survey ship has been ravaged by centuries of exposure to charged particles and high-velocity impacts of interstellar dust. Some systems still appear nominally active. Sensor returns indicate unusually short-lived charged particles near the derelict. Density distribution in the internal structure has also changed from patterns extrapolated from your previous encounters with the Domain Era exploration vessels, as if internal masses have been removed or intentionally redistributed. Um, excuse me, in English, please? Sorry, I, 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 I don't understand. Sciency speak. I'm the cool movie guy that the audience can relate to. What does that mean in layman's terms? Oh, it means that it's guarded by some assault drones. These are all destroyers, I think. So I will give the Fury and then my own destroyers and the Scarab and the Tempest and the Wolves. And realistically, that should be enough. And then I'll take over the Fury. Falkris, thanks for people running for 55 months. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for sharing the Prime. We gotta murder some drones. These are the easy automated defense drones. They don't even have shields. They are tanky, though. So I'll give them that. Maybe I... Did I underestimate how much firepower I would need. It's not impossible. Oh yeah, I do have breach SRM pods, not the other thing. All right, well, I'm not even breaking a sweat, and that guy's dead. Yeah, we're good. We're good. They're just a little tanky. I just gotta keep backtracking. They're really aggressive. I'll give them that. <laughs> just ram that guy. <laughs> Wojo says, I didn't know how to play poker until today, but I'm definitely a wacky poker master now. Yeah, I don't know. If you learn how to play poker with Bellatro, I'm not sure how they would respond if you tried to bring those skills over to bear to a real poker table. It, it might not um, go well. All right, as your fleet finishes mopping up the automated defenses, a weak hyperwave ping is detected coming from the survey ship. It's unclear if this is a random noise from a dying subsystem or some kind of encrypted signal. Okay. Bring it on. And let's salvage the survey ship. Sometimes you can get some really good stuff, and uh, that's not one of those times. 
<laughs> this is not one of those times. Kind of unlucky. That's okay. There's some more stuff here, though. Another probe, and the desert world, fully surveyed. This one has poor farmland, sparse or moderate rare, or extreme weather, hot and habitable. We already surveyed this? Oh, I didn't survey that. Okay, we surveyed... I don't know when we were here. More automated defenses. These guys are also destroyers. Pretty much the same gig. Same gig as last time. Oh, I didn't deploy a ship. I knew that. I also deployed the wrong Medusa. He tells it cycle 215. Does that... Is that good? <laughs> Is that mini cycle? All right, we might need a little support on it. Wow, we are, I feel like we're destroying these guys a lot faster. Can the Tempest fly literally anywhere else other than directly in front of my lasers? You have, you are fast, you are nimble. I'm shooting, I have right away here. Dude, stop being so erratic. Pick a side. No, his is the main character. He's just like right in front of me. Is that... who's left? You? No, must fly straight into the ship. I do not want to recover any of those. But thanks for the offer. Another signal? Okay, there's not... There's not a, There's a lot of markers on this map. We're gonna get lucky eventually, because there's just a lot of stuff here. What the hell is that? Domain Era Cryo Sleeper Tantalus? Your fleet approaches a Domain Era Cryo Sleeper left from the initial domain exploration of the sector. This is one of the massive vessels of legend which transported millions of human immigrants from the core systems of the domain out into the great frontier stretching from the Sagittarius arm across the Orion Spur. Judging by the weak but stable EM read on the sensors, many of the sleeper caskets remain viable, even after so many hundreds of cycles here on the wild shores of Perseus. As your fleet moves to get closer, new energy signatures are <laughs> detected near the cryo sleeper. <laughs> Look at this guy. Who is, what is this? System plasma jets, two large composite, two medium missile, three large hybrid turrets, six medium hybrid turrets, eight small hybrid turrets, coal mod, automated ship, advanced targeting core, missile, auto forge, flux distributor, resistant flux conduits, heavy armor, insulated engine assembly, automated repair unit, and auxiliary thrusters. Wow, that's a lot of hull mods in a single ship. This is a capital size domain drone? I don't think I've ever seen this before. But like, I have a capital ship too. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm gonna try. There's no way we lose. The question is, do we lose any of our ships? Like, we're not gonna, we're not, I don't think we're gonna lose-lose. He has 22,000 hull integrity though. Which is two and a half times that of an eagle. And 2.2 times that of my carrier. So yeah, I never, I never done this one before. I think the answer to this is only take big ships in. 
Like, don't take any of the weenies. I don't even know if it's worth taking destroyers in. I feel like the Shrike is going to get too close and die. I don't know. I feel like the destroyers are going to pop, but what if I don't commit enough power? I guess it's fine to send the omens. And have them run like PD. Oh, he's big. So we're gonna do like an engage order. Oh, shit. <laughs> I meant like engage with a maneuver or something, man. Hold on. Why would you boost into him? Back up. All right, yeah, and now, see, this is what we needed. That's really great positioning by this dude. Now you don't need to go there. Perfect bait. And we get the fighters going in. He's pushing the Aurora, which is worrisome. He's so tanky, dude. Okay, I'm bringing in all the destroyers now. Just in case. Did I take some damage? Bro, you can go around, dude. All right, fighters are going back in for another pass. He's so tanky. He's going to overload the eagle. All right, destroyers are coming in to try and like take some heat off. We're cooking his armor on the sides. Oh, I think, dude, I'm pretty sure my scarab just mag dumped torpedoes right there. Right into the side. He's cooking. <laughs> All right, it got a, it got a little spicy. It got it got a bit spicy. We're good. Hull integrity is good on all these. Shields were getting low. Eighty three percent hull integrity is a pretty good uh, trade, I think. Didn't lose anything. All I get is a plasma cannon. Okay. As your fleet finishes mopping up the automated defenses. Another weak hyperwave ping. That's like the third one we've seen. Okay, I want to know what this is. The long-haul cryo systems were built to last for centuries of interstellar travel. So it's no surprise most of the pod support machinery reads functional. While safe sleeper revival is beyond the capability of your fleet, a colony established within 10 light years of this location could benefit from a huge influx in population if it built facilities to awaken the long haul sleepers. Your executive officer cautions that it's unknown whether having sleepers make up a large percentage of a colony's population would cause any physical or psychological issues down the line. Well, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever found this before. Within 10 light years, it says, okay. How far is 10 light years? That's like... That's like this far. It has to be somewhere like in here. That's 7, 8, 8.6. This is too far. So that to be like... Like here... Around. We're way too far. So I'd have to settle somewhere in here. To be fair though, there are a lot of unexplored systems in this... 
It's very dense in this cloud, especially. So we might find something, actually, and who knows? There might be something in the system that we haven't surveyed yet that's good. Probably not, but maybe. Good abundant or bad hazard. I wonder why it has to be tin. I don't know, I guess the... There has to be some restriction, I suppose. <laughs> One Gamma Core. Well, I mean, the Cryo Sleeper thing is sweet, but the rest of the loot has been pretty bad <laughs> in this system. Surveyed, surveyed, surveyed. Nothing else. Okay, nothing else here. Chilling. Hopefully we find some better loot loot. At this point I'll take almost anything. Oh, dude, we have this old nebula. That's cool. Let's go to this red dwarf first, and then we'll bounce to the nebula. This place looks empty. Eh, there's a, there's a, there's a couple planets. Is this Mass Effect? Yeah, Mass Effect 2 OST. It's a, it's a little, that's why it's a little intense right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's behind? Someone's. Did I just. Someone chasing me? Who's chasing me? Huge fleet chasing me. Is that the pirate fleet? Hold up. Is the pirate fleet chasing me? Oh my god. It is. Well, we could take him. Ugh. <sighs> We can take him. Drimbus, thank you for uh, priming again. The Prim Stream sub. Welcome back, Drimbus. Thanks for sharing. Mika says, don't let your dreams be memes. Don't let your dreams be memes. Chat, what's your dream for this weekend? That you're not going to let become a meme. I'm glad it's Friday. Feels good. All right, let's get everybody out. We'll get the wolves out after. Ice cream, sleep, big hamburger, do absolutely nothing. I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. More Star Sector Stream. I, I'm, I regret to inform you, you won't find more Star Sector Stream tomorrow. You can look for it, but you won't find it here at least. But yeah, thanks again, Falcris, Mika's, Drimbus. Appreciate all the subs, guys. Fix my PC. What's wrong with it? What'd you do to it? Why'd you break it? Okay, how do I do this again? <laughs> I feel like I do the escorts differently each time. Uh, let's go Tempest with Shrike this time. And let's do this. Point defense dude with this. And then you escort you. Wait. Yeah, whatever. I did it backwards. But you do you did the boom boom. You know? You feel me, chat? You with me on that one? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's right. It's hard to explain, but we go in pairs. I like pair escorts so it doesn't get too crowded. And they can kind of cover each other. One ship does damage, one ship does point defense. One ship rams into the other ship and makes its side turn red. Oh yeah. We're riding into battle to take out the Vengeance fleet. These pirates think they can avenge their fallen brothers. <laughs> They'll join them.
You can see missile impacts now? Is that what that is? I, I've never even paid attention to that. That's cool. I assume that's like missile impacts. Oh, I found them! <laughs> Yo, I think I found the pirates. We gotta make a turn! They're all to the right! Job applications? Ugh. Doesn't sound like fun. You probably don't want to get that much closer to me. Little guy. Okay. You made a grave error. Just a massive error. Okay, I have two orders, about to be three, so let's... Oh, man, we're kind of, like, split up here, aren't we? Let's murder that guy. Engage this guy. I'm gonna swing down and help over here. Get them, little fighters. Get that wolf. Protect yourselves. Alright, I'm bringing them home. We got one. This is what I do, chat. This is what I do. I can keep the pressure on. That face frigate just got smoked. Alright, chasing is a bad idea, though. but I really don't like them lurking behind me. I don't like that I can see this guy, but he's not on the map. Okay. Get them, boys. That shrike is way out of position. Oh, the unfortunate wreckage. Okay. <clears throat> well, we are... This is extremely spread out. I got a carrier and my Aurora's down here. They're taking our points, but we're winning. We're just kind of whittling them down. This destroyer wants to 1v1 a carrier. He's welcome to try. He is tanky, I'll give him that. Oh yeah, we're back. Never left. Com relay beta loss. There's they're kinda like sniping our control points and just generally being obnoxious. We're about to finish off their super freighter, and then things get a little easier for us. I can defend myself reasonably. All right, we need to eliminate the mules that are just down here. Uh, that needs to change to an eliminate order. That needs to be an engage order. And then we need to go just like 
boom, boom on these. I'm just gonna put an order on everybody. When everyone has an order, no one does. But it just lets them know, like, uh, it's, okay, putting an order on everybody is like playing man-to-man -man defense in, in basketball. You know what I'm saying? Chai, you understand basketball references, right? I know you do. That's why I used it. It's man-to-man -man coverage instead of zone coverage. I know the sports ball. The Falcon always escapes. Like we can't we can't take him out. No matter what. He somehow always retreats. There he goes. Goodbye. Too fast. The overdriven Falcon. Okay, I'm gonna let him go. I don't really feel like hunting these guys down. It's just kind of annoying. I'll happily take your stuff. Uh, oh, I leveled up earlier, and I have pilots who leveled up. Um, okay, fleet defeated. <sighs> we got him. And more importantly, chat, we have farming at Stray Dog. The capital's got farming, dude. We're actually making almost 17k credits a month now. Look at that. That that's gone up. And we still have growth. I turned off hazard pay. So that's something. That's helping us with the budget. It's not there yet. We need to get rid of tech mining soon. I'm not gonna get rid of it until the text changes to say that it's done done. And then house cat, we're still waiting on growth. But we got mining. It, it'll make money once we stop doing hazard pay, which will happen in a bit. We got to work our way up there. Reinforce bulkheads. All right, you nerds, are you done chasing me around now? Send your vengeance fleet out of here. Ooh, a Terran world! I'm sorry. Where did this come from? Uh, a geologically rich... What does it say? World with a nitrogen, oxygen, atmosphere, a magnetic field, and ample amount of liquid water. The axis of rotation creates mild seasons. This type of planet is named for the reputed ancestral home of all humans in the galaxy. Show me the money. Abundant organics. Some ore. Ultra rich rare ore. Rich farmland. That's a class 5 system if I ever saw one. 125% hazard rating. Pretty good, chat. Pretty good. We got, we got a whole bunch of stuff here, dude. The fields promise a rich harvest to reward the farmers that work these fertile lands. Ultra rich rare ores, crazy, and moderate, and organics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, has minus 10% accessibility because of high grav. That's really the only mark on its record. But yeah, that's a good one. Connect comms to the signal from the surface. Your sensor officer confirms there is still some kind of unregistered colony site, complete with decorative earthworks, underground habitation, and a feeble attempt at agriculture. Never seen this before. Uh, hello? Oh, oh, blessings of blood. Thank Providence you're receiving. We are a community of, of faithful settlers who were led astray from the true Church of Galactic Redemption. She clasped her hands together. We wish now to repent and to return and beg the Holy Church for forgiveness. What are you doing on the fringe? We were followers of, uh, uh. Realizing that she is falling over her words, she takes a moment to collect herself and begins again. We believed a new revelation had been given, like that revealed unto Lud. Our false prophet claimed to hear a choir of angels, and the song told him that a great cleansing would fall upon the sector, a war between angels and demons to end the world. 
Any who did not follow our exodus would be destroyed by the wrath of God. So we followed him, a handful of hundreds, to this place. Though the world is rich, it was not, it is no paradise. And the demands of our false prophet became bizarre, unreasonable, unpious. He grew wroth at any questioning, claiming that angels commanded him. And then, um, there was an accident. Sister Reese Romero looks aside, avoiding the gaze of the comms. He is, I pray that his restless spirit might find a peace now, which it did not know in life. I see an unfortunate course of events. Sister Romero bows slightly, hands clasped. Yes, our poor fortune is punishment for our foolishness and faithlessness. How many of you need transport? There are 198 of us, Captain. The woman looks up, hopefully. Some of us have spacefaring experience and other useful trades. We could work as crew during the journey back to the core. All right, come with me. Blessings of blood upon you, sir, the Luddick sister says, effusing about redemption and the like. You managed to offload her to an adjutant to make arrangements. Ops gruffly coordinate shuttles with the planet-side heretics. They are a thin and subdued group, nearly starving despite the lush landscape of the planet due to their former prophet's lack of preparation. If nothing else, perhaps the church will appreciate their return. Okay, interesting. Oh, is this their ship, the derelict Nebula-class civilian transport? Storytelling. That's storytelling, baby. Anyway, Terran World is kind of the highlight of this. It's kind of a big highlight of this. I need music. Uh, the soundtrack ran out. I didn't mean to eat. I fat fingered the eburn button. Noom. And we go. Anyway, that is right next door to the colony ship that we just found, so that is neat. And now we got like a nebula to check out. With an, a lot of domain ships around here, but none of them that are that good. Like, I haven't actually found anything other than, like, a place to settle, you know, which is more valuable than, than its weight in gold. But, you know, I want to have something I can take back and sell, too. Alright, there's nothing here. War of the Worlds, thank you for gifting a sub to Py Pyrodox. Pyrodox. Thanks for subbing, dude. Uh, I needed to, like, scan the planet here. I forgot to scan it. We already been here. But I did not survey. Gotta finish my homework. One truckload of Plutonics. <laughs> I'm not asking for much, just wealth beyond my wildest imagination. Praise be the Omnissiah. Hey, widespread ruins could be it. Could be. All it takes is one. Well, there's a... F I said a truckload. Well, cheap food will have to do. <laughs> Better than nothing, I guess. Alright, I feel like we should continue searching out here. Uh, we've hit all this pocket. I have not hit anything in this area at all. None of these. We could also go even further. And then hit like a really distant cluster. Depends on how soon we want to go back. I think it might be wise to hit the most distant clusters when we have more consistent income. And we got plenty of systems to explore if we just kind of travel back. 
all the way down to here. I have five unsurveyed, but I surveyed three. I don't remember being here. What was in this system? I don't know. We had to go around the space highway. How is the money? I have some of it. But not for long. Unless I find some more money. I've been doing uh, bounties to try to justify my exploration. Chat, if you see any like... Ooh, this is like three stars. That's cool. If you see any notifications on the left-hand side that's like, your planet is about to become under attack, let me know. Because <laughs> I'll probably miss it. And not notice it. Ooh, what's that? I didn't see. A Revenant class phase tender. It's not a bad thing. Don't know if it's worth a story point to get a third one of these, is it? How many story points do I have? I have 14. I already have two of them, but I guess three doesn't hurt. We've been really lucky finding these. Fine, I'll take it. We also got a bunch of recreational drugs. <laughs> do we have enough crew for this? We do. So I'm just going to go ahead and repair it and fix the demon. For some black market trading runs, three is solid. Yeah, three is pretty good. My money! I got a Sarissa wing blueprint. I like getting BPs. I'm happy with that from Tech Prince. Something is here. I might have to, like, e-burn into this. It's just a probe with a bunch of automated defenses, actually. They'll be easy. I'm just trying to decide like how much I should commit to this. I think the sending the Aurora is a good idea. All destroyers, definitely the Scarab. Definitely the Tempest and the two wolves. And that ought to be enough. And I can take over as the Aurora pilot for a bit. This, uh, I guess we're inside the corona right now, so the screen is, like, really bright. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. I gotta be careful here. I overload real easy. There you go, boys. I'll hook you up. The Aurora is pretty crazy. I gotta remember that I have the uh, the DEM on this ship as well. Nothing special. Keeping us topped off. Another hyperwave ping. And a probe. Alright, the probes, yeah, the probes have just been very basic. There should still be one planet somewhere. No, I surveyed both. Okay, so I think I should just check the other star. See if there's any, like, sensor readings that pick up. Story points have no value if you never spend them. That is true. They are there to be used. 
And if you don't, who will? They're there so that we can build in two mods into every single one of our ships. Oh, so that was the whole system. Okay, nice. All three of these go to the same place. Gotcha. Yeah, we're just gonna meander our way back home. Hit up anything that happens to... meet us halfway. Do some scans. I like to check around this star even when there's no planets. <laughs> Who put this battle on light mode? <laughs> oh, there is something here. One of these times I'll be rewarded, but not this time. Just a probe. All right, well. Another system surveyed. <laughs> and then there's one, two. Is this the same system? And then whatever is over here. We have survey data. There's also exploration mode. We've, yeah, we've already got survey data on here, but not here or here. We don't even know what's there. All right. We got some cleanup to do. Chad, how am I going to make money? <laughs> Have you thought about that? How am I going to make money so I can spend 500k on heavy industry, dude? Do I look like I'm made of 500k right now? Hyperlanes all headed in the wrong direction. I'm gonna be real. The hyperlanes almost never go the way in which they would be useful to me. They're almost always sideways or in the literal opposite direction from where I'm actually going. I wish I could use them more. But I feel like I'm always avoiding them. Alright, this system sucks too. At least we're doing it quick. We're being fast. Is he still paying outrageous taxes? Yep, that that is the game. That is the Nexarellan start anyway. That do be how it works. I pay the taxes. I make the money. I pay the taxes. Or the debt. I guess debt would be a better way to put it. More accurately. We gotta find something better than probes. Otherwise, I just gotta click through a bunch of buttons that don't really change anything. They just give us like a teeny bit of, uh, my money! <laughs> okay, are we burnt out on this? Let me see. These ruins, you know, it says the chance of a new find still remains. So if the chance still remains, then I'm gonna keep searching. I don't really have anything else to put in its place anyway right now. Okay, I think that is it here too. <sighs> Lol, this guy pays his taxes. I'm trying to be good. Please don't look at me. Please do not notice me government senpai, you know? I'll keep my head down. I'll pay my taxes. I'm not doing anything sketchy here. Just leave me be. Let me continue living my life unperturbed by the tax man.
IRS be like, a vengeance fleet will launch in 15 days. <laughs> Your reputation has led to this. Three awful planets. All in a row. This one looks cool, at least. Ooh, are there Luddick dudes here? Maybe that's why we left. Uh, the Luddick path has a presence here. Also, I just now realize I'm blocking the, uh, the map thingy, so there you go. Now you can see what is coming up on the scopes. Don't mind if I take this. Mine now. <laughs> Talix, you are covering the radar. Never mind. Durf. Both, both derfs, thingies off the keyboard. You're only allowed to use the mouse from now on. I will retreat back to Vodland where I will not make a fool of myself. Can you really promise that? Listen, if someone makes a fool of themselves, just because chat's not around to observe it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I like the radar being covered. It's the authentic crew experience. Anyway. Why are all these planets so spread out? This system is just kind of annoying. Invasion Shah. Hegemony invading Sindri and Deek to space. We're going to have to look and see who's winning the war. Where am I going? This way, I guess. If a Jeff makes a fool of themselves in an empty chat, are they still Jeffing? Yeah, because all you need is one chatter plus the streamer. And, uh... You can end up in the same place. In fact, that makes it even more emphasized because it's the only chatter, so there's no one to even cover them up or hide them. Alright, we gotta go back. We're not exactly finding riches untold here. There might have been something down there, but it's not really worth. All right, we've already surveyed. Let's just survey this. I could just swing up to here. There's only two systems next to us that we haven't like scoped out. And this is one of them. But yeah, it's going to take us a little while before House Cat... It's actually 75%, so every month it goes up by oh, 5%. So in about five months, we should be able to build another, like a, another industry here in House Cat and hopefully, as a result, boost its income and then take off hazard pay. And that'll boost income a lot more for a while. Remnant, why are you here? Why are you here? I assume the Tempest by itself should be enough for this. Yeah, the Tempest by itself is pretty strong. I like the early game when it's just like you and two to three other destroyers and nothing to lose. See, I like the portion of the game around right now where you're just, you've got a good, nice fleet comp. 
Um, you know how strong you are. You can handle most threats that aren't like actual war fleets. And you have like the, the colony development train is rolling. Ours is still more of a snowball than anything else, but it has started rolling. Which is all I can really ask for, I think. There is progress. An equipment cache. Could be cool. <laughs> We've been striking out pretty hard, I think. <laughs> who who put that there is what I want to know and why? What were they thinking, dude? Alright, let's get out of here. This place sucks. I'm going broke. Maybe we can do some trades. There's like one more system. <sighs> we'll get there eventually. I love when you reach the point in the game where you can kind of just survive by exploring and surveying. Yeah, unfortunately I've kind of passed that point in the game. Um, part of that is due to the game start that I chose. I can't, I'm not making enough money from just exploring and surveying. Sadly. But I can do so via a combination of things. I just gotta like, I gotta use the whole toolkit. I gotta do the trades. When the trades are, are done, I gotta go explore. When the explore, to explore, I need to be picking uh, high paying bounties that sort of pay for a couple months of travel time. That kind of thing. Are there pirates? There's gotta be pirates in this system, right? Hiding in the asteroid belt or something? I wonder if there's like a bounty here or something. Wait, we haven't been close enough to civilized space. We don't even know about any quests. All right, well, let's just go then. I'm not gonna spend two months looking for the pirate that may be, probably is here. Okay, and as we get close to home, we should get huge updates on the left that tell us a whole bunch of intel. And we're back. Chat, what is this? <laughs> who, I know who did this, but who did this? This is my system. Why is there a Luddick nav buoy here? Oh, I need to turn my uh, transponder on so people aren't afraid of me. Who dis? Unknown, looking for Sindri. Oh, well, well, well. If it isn't my own space constantly under assault while I'm gone. All right, before we do this fight, I want to take a quick kind of early, just quick BRB. Just need to take a uh, switch to night mode and coffee bathroom break. So I'm going to do that real quick. Starting with that. <clears throat> Chat, give me a minute. I'll be back shortly.
Yo. So, I decided to also get a drink and eat a cookie while I was gone. Also didn't take Midas out, so I should probably do that. I already ate the cookie, I'm not sharing it with you. You need to go outside? Yawn if you need to go outside. Okay. That's what I thought. Why are you so small? Why are you so small? But so licky. Why do you have such a big nose? He doesn't know the answers to any of these questions. He needs to learn. Why does he look like that? Uh, years of breeding, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Probably. All right, one, one more minute. One more minute, chat.
Okay, sorry about that. Ooh. Who dis? Do I even need the carrier for this? I guess it can't hurt. I guess it can't hurt. Just cost us 50 supplies to deploy. And whatever we need to recover. We don't have that many... We don't have that many points. All right, I get get the tempest, capture the sensor jammer, the com relay, and the other sensor jammer, and then we'll get some reinforcements in. <clears throat> Hello, gamers. Can we turn Midas back into a wolf? <laughs> He's a. Uh, he <laughs> I, I think it's too late to reverse engineer. I'm gonna bring in my reinforcements now that we have some extra points. And this is where it's gonna be behoove us to, uh... Where's the Shrike? Oh, it's all the way over there. Alright, so... Tempest... Go with the Fury. Escorts. Hey. Oh, I'm allergic to... <laughs> Pairing up my escort frigates with my larger ships. Whew. I am allergic to dogs also, but that's not one that should go in the sneeze record. Only the first one counts. All right, somebody goes with the Shrike. <clears throat> You go with the Shrike. Point defense. You go with... Whoever you want, really. I guess go with that one. Wolf, go with you. Other wolf, go with you. Alright. <clears throat> it's time to fight. Everyone's chasing the one ship that they see. I don't know if that's a good idea, but they're determined to blow up the kite over there. I think I found the majority of the enemy pirates. To party! <laughs> that's right, Mary Skipper. Is your camera not updating? Is your stream unpaused? What do you mean, is my camera not updating? What does that mean, Chad? Your, f your first response to troubleshooting the stream should always be F5. Okay, I feel like these ships are moving around us really fast. Well, I found my first target. One down. I could probably handle these nerds. I got some help as well. Got some nice torpedo volleys in there. G 
Get him! Nice job. <clears throat> Gotta put some pressure on these dudes. Good, got him with the flame out. Take his engines. And the torps do the rest. All right, feeling pretty good about this. Feeling pretty good, here's what we need to do. We need to eliminate order on both the phase frigates because they're just annoying up here. We need an engage order on this dude. And on the, uh, the destroyer. Eliminate the kite. And then I need to turn around and head toward either this side or this side. Probably this one. I'm turning as fast as I can. <laughs> it looks like you're bullying them. Good, that's what it should look like. I'm here to win. What's the difference between engage and eliminate? Eliminate is reckless. Engage is like steady. So they'll still put themselves in a bit of risk when you push engage, because it'll be like, please fight them. And then it, and then <clears throat> um, eliminate is like, kill them at all costs. Even death. That's just like a be super aggressive. So I have to, I, I try to put the phase frigates on be super aggressive because the phase frigates are just really annoying. And they hide for as long as they can, so we need like constant pressure on them to try and, and take them out. So you'll see how like, how how aggressive my ships are being trying to take the phase frigate out. Now they've got like an overdriven cruiser over here, which is a bit of a problem. So I'd consider taking that order off and then just saying like, engage the overdriven. And then I'm gonna put my eagle on that task because he is very well suited for it. Make sure you pause when you give orders. Then you can give as many orders as you want with only one command point. Which is a really, really big feature that you need to be aware of. I don't think I need the comm relay, but it does give us visibility. So that's valuable. But yeah, I'm like really far out of position here because they took out their targets without me. And now they're repositioning. And I'm stuck in the, in the little nebula. So I'm going slow. My Shrike was destroyed. That's actually the first time my Shrike has been destroyed in a long time. We haven't lost a ship today. That was the first one. It's this uh, overdriven... The scarab is dodging and weaving. But yeah, I've got I got an eagle on the task. What's up, Jim Stick? They can't catch up to him. He's just like, oh, he retreated. The eradicator retreated. There's only like this, they left this one shepherd. <laughs> All right, they managed to get, the Eradicator managed to get our Shrike. First casualty of the day, 20 crew died. <clears throat> and I could pursue them, but like, I don't really care that much. I will recover my own Shrek, though. I need to level up still. <laughs> but anyway, that was like a big hostile fleet inside of our system. And now... They're not as big a problem anymore, but I guess there's still a problem?
How goes the run? Run's going good. We're just trying to stay afloat money-wise. I am getting a little low on cash. All right, well, if you, I wasn't interested in pursuing you until you kept trying to, like... <sighs> harass everybody. Now I gotta do something about it. I didn't want to do something about it, but now I gotta do something about it. I wonder if this is enough by itself. I didn't I, I didn't go from the side. I always forget. I do always forget. Chocolate cake, thank you for 45 months of sub, by the way. Welcome to the stream. Good evening. Hope you're having a nice Friday. And uh, you're here just in time to enjoy a little bit of Star Sector. I think I should help with this uh, cruiser. Because that's, that's the main threat. <clears throat> Everything else is sort of secondary. They do be getting away. <laughs> They are fast. But yeah, this campaign's been going pretty well. I've been happy with it. We found some really nice planets. We haven't found the best loot, but we found good loot. And I find that each time I go back and do another Star Sector run, I feel like there's a decent variety in like what you find run to run, which makes the looting fun. Because there's actually like rare stuff that you can uncover. Okay, we missed one ship. We got everything else. They're just left with the tankers, so they're pretty much defanged. What should my uh, skill point be put into? It's time to level up. And we got some uh, some pilots that we are officers that can level up too. I mean, we've got all in this is we could be a governor. Industries supply one more of the unit they produce. Or we could do... Uh, if, if, if we were like exploring, we could do the fuel consumption reduction, but I don't know. I feel like there's better stuff. We, did, we recently got crew training, which is plus combat readiness for all ships, which is huge. We got a lot of fleet... No, no combat skills, but a lot of fleet stuff. Tactical drills is just bonus damage for all ships and all weapons, and ground ops are better. We need three lower tier skills to get to the officer stuff. I was trying to get to the officer stuff. Coordinated maneuvers. All ships with officers get plus 6% to nav rating. The total nav rating for the deployed ships increases the top speed of all ships up to a max of 20%. Is that 20% bonus speed? Because that sounds crazy. Plus 50% to command point recovery rate from deployed frigates, 25% from destroyers. Um, you only get 1% for large hulls, but you get 3% for destroyers and 6% for frigates. Is there a limit on how many admins you can have? Uh... Maybe, but I don't know what it is. I have three. I can have three. And then two colonies under my personal control. The random loot factor is what makes this game shine for me. Yeah, it, that makes it highly replayable, Bucky. <sighs> I have been complaining about speed, and I don't really need wolf pack tactics that prioritizes smaller holes. Carrier group is good. It's just 50% faster fighter replacement. 
Effect increased by one and a half times for ships with officers. So, like, carrier group is good if we want to lean into the carrier style more. I don't know if having one carrier is enough for me to pick that. And then the crew losses fighter. We, we already have fighter protection for our carrier. Yeah, I really like coordinated maneuvers here. Let's go for the speed and the command point recovery. Both seem useful. How do we tell what our nav rating is as a fleet? I don't know where that's listed. I can see how many days to do repairs, total armor, sensor profile, burn levels not the same. Maybe you just see it in combat, perhaps. And we got some officers who need to level up, including Sonya Zam, who is in the Aurora right now. Yeah, I know it only applies to battles. I'm trying to figure out what the rating is. In the tooltip, there was something about burn. I mean, uh, nav rating? And which tooltip? The tooltip. The only place I've seen it is in combat in the green text. Okay. I'll look. The rating only takes into account ships you deploy, so it varies. Alright. I'll look next battle. Uh, the Aurora currently has helmsmanship, maneuverability top speed. I haven't put that on everybody. Missile spec, I'm putting that on everybody. We use a lot of missiles in this fleet. Gunnery implants for weapon range. They came with ordnance expertise, which is some flux dissipation. It's okay. Um, and now we can do... Plus one charge and regenerate charges. Combat endurance for peak operating time and combat readiness. Shield damage reduction. Damage to cruisers and capitals. Point defense or lower hull damage. Okay, very much the top two picks are shield and damage. I think the damage is possibly stronger but when i have a tech fleet i do really prioritize a lot of field modulation because we gotta we gotta keep those shields up and this thing has three heavy blasters on it so i feel like it's doing a lot of damage already it just needs to survive and take less flux damage from shields all right you're level five so i can pick one of your skills to make it elite now that you've got it pretty much configured yeah, I regret not getting the other ability there, but I don't know. I had to go with my gut. So I can make one of these skills elite and get the elite perk. So this uh, plus 10 to top speed and the speed boost is at any flux level, which is awesome. 20% hard flux dissipation while shields are active and you overload for less. Faster missile rate of fire. ECM rating or flux capacity per ordnance point spin on weapons. How much flux would that be? Like, I'm curious. So like right now, we have 15,390 flux capacity. Okay, chat, so let's do some math here. <laughs> How many ordnance points am I spending purely on weapons? And we're gonna calculate this. 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 28, 34, 40, 52, 64, 74, 78, 82? I want to say 82. Okay, and so if you take 82 and you say plus times 20... That's, that's 1,640 extra flux capacity. So it's like 10%. It's like 10% more flux. Which is, you know, it's good. I don't know if it's as good as everything else. Namely, the 10 top speed slash the flux dissipation while shields are active. I say, let's go for the 20% hard flux dissipation while shields are active. Final answer. 
All right, mostly lost is hooked up into an eagle. Has ballistic mastery, weapon range. Everybody came with ordnance expertise. Already has field modulation. And then finally, what are you going to get? Do you even have missiles? Not really. If you keep flying the eagle, you won't anyway. Uh, less hull damage taken. More damage to cruisers and capitals. Damage to fighters and missiles. More armor. I'd say just get target analysis. My eagles are mostly anti-cruiser and anti-capital. And a lot of harass. So we'll go target analysis to bulk you up. Now I can choose a skill to make elite for you. I think the eagle depends more. It certainly depends more on its ballistic. But I don't know if that's the one that I want. Because it's just 5% damage. It'd be nice to have like one ballistics expert in the entire crew. In case we get a ship that I, I want to... Because they're the only one that has ballistic mastery. So I'm just going to lean into it. Plus 5% damage by ballistic weapons. And really it's the 33% projectile speed. That I find good. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. But it feels right. Does everybody have an elite skill at this point? I think so. Is everyone level 5? Wow. Congrats to all the officers for hitting max level. I can retrain you, but right now you're actually doing pretty good. Alright, we're trying to clean up. We're in our home system right now. Trying to clean up the Luddick Path mess. They have been taking over my hotspots. Who's this? Persian League convoy. So some traders are coming in. Traders are coming in. But yeah, I think that there wasn't really any wrong choices. We're going to need some supplies. We have more fuel left over than I thought. We must have salvaged a good amount. I'm going to leave some trinkets in here. This is my home storage where I put all my goodies. And we need to sell some things. We got 4,600 medals because I've just been taking them all. Because <laughs> why not? Now we got to go make some money, Chad. <laughs> I'm going broke. Uh, I've been saving the beta and alpha cores. I got emergency supplies. I can sell this stuff if I need to. I'll just take all that. That is Wolfenstein, it sounds like. Okay, let's listen to some space. Space is the place. I think you know what time it is. I guess I could try, like, doing quests at our own dockside bar. That's a thing. We have 10 stability. The ground defenses are helping out. Let's see, we got these built. Helping to uh, keep raiders at bay. Make them pony up some more soldiers before they can raid our station. We don't have a station, but you know. We want to patrol HQ in an orbital. So this one's profitable. However, house cat... We're getting close. We just need to be unpaused for longer. Alright, let's give them some time. Let's 
Let's give him some time. Let's go trade. I'd say let's just get rid of the metals. <clears throat> I'm just going to go to the fire roll. <sighs> Clear up some inventory space. How much money would those guns get you? Yeah, like if I, if I ran out of money, I got stuff I can sell. So I've got I've got a nest egg. I got some retirement funds saved up. But I'm trying to make active money so I can keep that stockpile and not dip into it. And we've got some cargo. It's not like super valuable, but cargo's cargo. And we're taking it to either it's a it's a station called both <laughs> or Umu. Umu's right here. So I'm just going to trade with them. Hello? Wait. Now I can sell to Sword Habitat in Sindria for 43 per. Oh man, that just that trade just opened up. I swear we're always going to Sword. All right, well, I came here for no reason. Hopefully the deal's still there by the time I get there. Somebody might fulfill it before I arrive. Lots of good trades in Sword. We've been there a lot. It's probably been our most traded in spot in the entire game. That's 240k medals. Well, the price will go down as we sell dynamically. So it won't be quite that much. It'll start out that high and then as we fill demand. Which, to be honest, if you think about it, is kind of bullshit. And the reason I say that is because if I go online and I go on Craigslist and I go, I am putting out an order. I'm putting out a buy order. My demand is 5,000 articles of paper. And I am paying 100 cents, $1 per page. And then you come in and you're like, okay, I got, I got as much as you put out a buy order for. And you go, okay, well, you've sold me one. So I'm lowering my price to 99 cents. You're like, wait a second. No, no, that's not how it works. I, I'm giving you the entire bulk order because you put out a price and a quantity. And you're like, well, you sold me 10. My price is dipped. I was at a dollar for the first one. But now I'm at 90 cents per piece of paper. <laughs> like, hold up, dude. Why don't you just put the average? Like, my demand is 5,000 things. I am paying an average price of 75 for all 5,000 of those things. Right? Wouldn't that make sense? Instead of using the top end of the price, just use the average of how much it would cost to buy all of them. That was one of the infinite money glitches. What was the infinite money part about it? Okay, Sword Habitat, this one. This used to be our home system. Ages ago. Now, it's like homecoming. Hello, Kyoko, get down. Welcome to the stream. Good Friday evening. Price drop, buy it back, sell it back. Well, okay. Why is their buy price the same as their sell price in that example? Wouldn't the buy price go up? That's just economics? What? Okay, listen. If I have a demand... 
for a thousand things and I get that demand, I don't lower my I don't turn around and sell them back for the same as I just bought them for. You can solve all that by just accounting for the price drop in the bulk order listing. Well, you can also account for that by if they have a demand for items, they don't sell those items after they buy them, hence the demand. They need them to use them. Right? So the problem is that they they have the items you sell can be purchased back and bought back. So it's the ability to buy back your own goods. See, so yeah, it's only 130,000 for me. Cuz the unit price goes down to 32. I can sell more and the unit price goes down to 28. And you can kind of see the unit price drop once I hit the first like 2,000. I'm just going to get rid of the rest of them. Because I don't feel like going all over town. Ooh. They have a shortage of food, too? We're in business, dude. That's not bad. That's not bad. You know what? Take some heavy machinery. Take my transplutonics. Just take it all, dude. I need the money. And honestly, I'm paying a ton of taxes. So if I go on the black market and just sell these drugs, you better look the other way. That's all I'm saying, okay? And then I'm gonna come around to the directory. I'm gonna be like, Station Commander, I've got some AI cores with your name on them. And that's 100K. Now, I expect to see no suspicion, but you're still minimally suspicious of me. You shouldn't be sus I just sold you 400,000 credits of transactions and then like three drugs and they're like, I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm like your biggest customer. I just filled every single need on your entire habitat. I'm keeping you alive. Anyway, we actually did make enough money to pay for our trip. We're back to a million credits. We need to be higher than that. So let's look for another deal. Ooh, they're buying 7,500 fuel. Okay, fuel actually looks like a solid trade right now. Otherwise, we're looking at domestic goods is almost a three to one return on investment. We just did the best deal for this stuff. Ooh, vol I can buy volatiles in the system. All right, that's a great deal. We gotta go buy from the pirates. Organics is three to one. Food is four to one. So like a nice thing to do if you if you want some trade tips is buy one of the things you might be interested in trading. That way, when you are near civilized space, you can you can just look in your own inventory to get local prices and see if they've changed without having to stop into a shop. But it does look a little more disorganized in your stash. But can be nice. Someone is pew-pewing over here. Why is there a Fulgent-class drone ship? Just floating along. Um, Remnant, what are you doing, dude? Why are you guys tormenting my customers? 
Neither side trusts you. <laughs> You're unable to join the battle. <laughs> okay, I'll just help myself to the station that's under attack. They don't want any freaking help. All right. You don't get any then. Woo, those are expensive. Okay, we are here for like organics? No. Food? Wait, what was I coming here for? Oh, oh, volatiles, volatiles. These are crazy cheap. 150 credits. And we can sell them in system back. So we buy from the pirates and sell to sword station in system. It's crazy. But their demand is like less than 100 though. So I don't know how good that'll be. Zero stability, 1% access. It's easy. <laughs> no problem, dude. All right, Sword Habitat, I came back with gifts. Look at this presents I bring you. Chai, I didn't press buy, did I? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know if they have demand. Yeah, they're only paying 179 Damn. All right, we got to sell somewhere else. So let's see if we can find anything else that'll sell well in Sesame, and we can do two stops. Uh, the only thing that has decent ROI is maybe, no, Transplutonics isn't good enough. I can buy these in Sesame for really cheap. Okay, that might be worth. Let's just go buy Organics from the Ludic Path. Ugh. To sell to the pirates? Alright, fine. We gotta make a little extra cash, dude. What's up, Alaria? Sorry for being late. Thank you. Apology accepted. Gamer Deathbot, what up, dude? A lot of hegemony out here. Should I be afraid? Hello, gamers. Gamers, we're gaming. That noise sounded bad. Conquest mission. 432k <laughs> to take over Cha. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Oh my god, how am I gonna sneak in to trade with the Luddick Path? Look where it is. Hegemony space, Luddick space, Sindrian space. They're right in the middle, dude. There's no way I can sneak in there. And then... Are they all attacking the Luddick Path? Does that mean I can just go in right now while they're fighting? Shh. Don't tell anyone, chat. Don't tell anybody. They're a little preoccupied. I will buy all of that. I will buy all of that. And then I need to sell that to Nona. I just sneak back over here into the asteroid field, hide, turn my transponder on, bunk into the shield bubble, and then go on down to Nona. I'm surprised they all live in harmony together. I need to look at the state of the politics. Who's at war with who? Because I think it's the hegemony bullying everybody. All 
Alright, why did I come here? For <laughs> Chat, why did I come here? Volatile? Oh, the Volatiles. Okay, you're right, you're right. I'm just gonna ditch them all. <sighs> They've got really cheap gas. So we buy all of that. Nothing else. Hey, we probably need some more supplies. I'll just buy the supplies too. If we wanted to sell the fuel, we can sell that in sword. We sell this in sword. We sell that. Oh my god, we're kind of like pirates? We are single-handedly supplying the entire pirate station in sword. We're empowering them. Perhaps too much. But they're they're so wealthy. Where do they get all the money? Profiteering is a word? Pirating, probably. <laughs> it's all, the, it's kind of just like out of the way. You have to really intentionally go to the station to attack it, so it's just like hanging out here. So most people seem to be leaving it kind of alone. Peace with hegemony. Ceasefire between Sindri and Dicta and hegemony. They don't like each other. Oh, I gotta turn off my thing. My transponder. Okay. 70 credits a unit for fuel. I'm gonna sell you, like, the majority of my fuel. And then just buy some from a different station. That's 300k just for fuel. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the organics you ordered, sir, and the food you ordered, sir. Some extra concrete I found. Four, yep, okay. Now, now we're getting the monies. They want supplies, too. Chat. Are we the bad guys? Does this make us the baddies? Five hundred and seventy-three thousand in cash, though. We just made thirty percent ROI. is over here. Oh! Oh! Big. Alright, guys. I ain't trying to destabilize you, but I don't feel like paying taxes right now. I just need a few things. Just need to borrow a couple things. You didn't sell them weapons. Yeah, I was bringing humanitarian aid. You know, your normal stuff. Food, organics, supplies. I leveled up to 14. Why <laughs> did I level up? I just leveled up. I'm about to hit level cap. My obligation is 37k! It's getting crazy. We're gonna have to, like, I just spent all that time making so much money and I just keep losing money somehow. 
Our colonies just need to become profitable. That's kind of the big hiccup. We can't support our home without more consistent money. And that is a fact. <clears throat> All right. Do we have enough fuel to get to cheap fuel? If we go straight there, yes. We need to probably just go to Lagash, unless we want to do any more trading. What's up, Soli? Pump it, baby! Thanks for a year and a half. And I appreciate... I appreciate you subbing again. Welcome to the Friday stream. Yeah, we're kind of just passing time until we can start making more money with our colonies. Like, we need them to... industrialize. Which takes time and months. It is not a fast process. We can also sell some of our big stockpile. I'm about to run out of fuel. <laughs> I hope this is Lagash. It is. Good. We're running on empty. Show me my favorite station, Lilu, down there. All right, let's go to Blue Ox for some supplies first. And I gotta spend some money. We could take some supplies and then sell them. But I'd probably rather just buy some for myself. But it's already Saturday. No, it's not. Don't say silly things. Uh, wait, are the Tritachian and Hegemony at war? <laughs> they were allies! What? Now they are not allies, and they are enemies. Okay. And now the Tritachian is allied with Sindri and Dicta, who is also allied with the Ludic Church. Okay. I'll take it. I don't know. You guys need to stop letting the hegemony win, though. They're like winning the game of Galactic Risk. They're getting more powerful and making you all much weaker. Okay, somehow we're back to not having money. <laughs> I don't know how this keeps happening. We're back to under a mill. I can't afford to be under a mill, chat. My problem is maybe I need to trade in more profitable wares. It just feels like drug the drugs don't go far enough. Organs doesn't go far enough. All right, well, let's go check home. Just print money. It's that easy. They always seem to win in next to Relin. I actually randomized the fleet, I mean the faction economies and starting conditions. It's pure coincidence that they're as strong as they are. What up, Sax? Thanks for a big tier three sub, dude. Perfect time to resub for some Jeff Sector. We've had some big battles, lots of combat today. A lot of pew-pew. 
We've only lost one ship and we uh, we salvaged it and recovered it. That reminds me, we can kind of take a little bit of strain off of our daily fuel and supplies. By leaving one of our cargo frigates here. This guy, because he's not even really doing anything. We also have kind of like too many crew. By a large amount, so we can cut a little bit off of the paychecks by letting these guys chill. All right, this is our home. How's it looking? 24% to the next growth. It's profitable. Tech mining is still the chance of new findings remain. Let's see if that changes after the month rolls over here. You're not finding anything. Don't lie to me. Still says a chance for a new find remains. It's got to be tiny right now. House cat is 92% to the next industry. It's going to be like two more months. Two more months. This is all we need. Okay. Uh, What do? Well, I leveled up, so I guess that first. Plus two to maximum number of officers you can command. Plus one to max level of officers under your command. So I can either have two more officers or I can have higher level officers who each get an extra elite skill. I don't know. I feel like having two more officers is more valuable to me. That way I can cram them into some new ships. Okay, what about making some money via missions? The surveys really just don't do it. <laughs> Only some of these big bounties. A Ludic Path base. <sighs> Has been detected. Dude, look! It is providing support to active pather cells at our planet. But what are the odds that we'll be able to take this thing down? Like, it really depends on how protected it is. I got an idea. What if we bust one of these guys out? <laughs> is it worth doing that? Uh, how much will it be to repair this? 102 supplies? Fix her up. Let's see it. It's got three D mods on it. It's kind of the downside, but it has to be in our fleet to get fixed. The graded life support it needs more max crew no no no. it need okay it needs 600 skeleton crew Oof. yeah i don't know if this was a good idea we don't have we don't have 600 crew extra i've been wanting to take this out of the oven for something but it's going to cost us 10 fuel per light year jump. 43 supplies a month. Wow. Okay. We never we haven't played with this thing yet. We got a lot of choices. Crew under strength. That it is. Now it's four four crew over strength. <laughs> okay, we got plasma cannons, tachyon lasers, 
high intensity lasers, auto pulse cannons, and point defense. So point defense probably not. That's an easy elimination. Uh, typically, people in this position will probably go for Tachyon or High Intensity for the bonus range. It is a big ship. On the side, there's nothing wrong with doing some Paladin PDs where they have some arc, but you might want other larger... Uh, this this is a capital-sized ship with a, with a large C. Lots of turret mounts. And on top of all of that, it has Fortress Shield you can activate. Reduce the damage taken by shields to a minimum. It also has a built-in advanced targeting core, so ballistic and energy weapons are doubled in range. So that's nice. I feel like the hole in the middle could have been used for cargo or anything. It would be less cool. I mean, it's, it's less mass. Right? So maybe it was just about having a circular defensive platform so you can be defending all around you and fight everyone. It's a speed hole. Yeah, exactly. It gives it aerodynamics. No one can hit the hull of the ship either. Like, the, no one can aim for center mass here. Okay. So the difference here between the plasma cannon, an arcane weapon that's one of the most devastating sustained damage dealers in the sector but has 825 flux per second, whereas Atakian Lance is more range. It also is a huge amount of damage, but with an EMP component that arcs across the target. So typically you'll want 750 damage per second versus 346. So Plasma Cannon's for sustain, like just bursty damage. Atakian's more sustain and range. And then you got High Intensity Laser, which is a little cheaper. And it's got 400 flux per second. No EMP component. But it's a beam weapon. High explosive. So it's doing crazy damage versus armor. So I would probably do <clears throat> double tacky and lance here. And then augment the Tachyon Lance with, uh, like, two high-intensity lasers on the side. So you have some of that armor punch to get through tanky. And then... This also cuts down the flux, because, like, slightly less flux than these. And then we got medium on the front. Then that could be anything. That could be Graviton to punch through, like, give some shield support. That can be point defense. We got missile turrets here as well that have full articulation. So many choices. So, like, the rear can be point defense if we had any. <laughs> we kind of, like, don't have any. Hmm. Think, think, think. How do I want this ship to, to act? How much point defense do I want on it versus just pew pew guns? I say let's go on the front with, with double graviton beams. Matching the range of our existing lasers. And then on the small, maybe we do a little bit more point. I only have three burst PDs. We've been using so many burst PDs. So if, uh, I guess I could do two front mounted burst PDs and then something less on the sides, missile wise. I want something that is fire and forget that I don't have to care about. Uh, so we'll go swar anti-swarmers here to try to get fighters off of us. Or I could do four 
Um, salamanders. I got a medium universal turret. Ooh. That could be missiles. That can be lasers. That can be ballistic. I think I know what I want. <laughs> Two more graviton beams. Relentless shield pressure. Hypervelocity drivers are good too, but I think let's just go lasers for now. Uh, in the side turrets, this is probably when we're going to do just some basic like LRPDs here. And here. And there. Because if not point defense, then I don't know what goes on the rear here. Am I out of LRPDs? Why don't we... We've never been... We haven't been looting LRPDs. Are you serious? Okay. Uh, well, th why are we so short on, like, every point defense except for baby PD lasers? And also, uh, heavy burst... We don't have anything. What do I put on the rear mount slot, then? <laughs> put some pulse lasers on the tail. <laughs> like, get off my ass. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Just some nice, consistent harass for anybody that's, like, sitting behind us. Okay, weapon groups. Tachyon Lance number one, high intensity number two. On auto fire. Gravitons on three on auto fire. Pulse lasers on four on auto fire. Swarmers on five on auto fire. And then all PD on six on auto fire. Not gonna lie, I never know what to do with this ship. It can do a lot of things. It's good at many things. Alright, in my case, we know that we're using energy weapons. I could extend the range of all beam weapons. Beam. 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 Lower their turn radius. That would make our point defense worse. But, uh, chat, does advanced optics get multiplied by advanced targeting core? It says, which one applies first? Adding advanced optics or multiplying extended range by 100%? Because if it multiplies after the, the range increase, then that's like at 400. I don't need expanded magazines. Or any of these things. Um, accelerated shields, maybe, but meh. Put some weapon mods on here. I don't mind advanced turret gyros to compensate, but it's not my first pick. It should be plus 400. That's what I would think. I might need to do burn drive because it's at a 7. I don't know if we already have a 7, but that's 40. I've been building these in, but maybe I don't know if I should keep building them in. Ox thrusters, maybe, would be really nice. Because you have to aim the tacky and lances. 50% maneuverability. I'll put it on temporarily. 
Uh, reinforced doors, hangar. We don't do missiles. ECM rating. No, 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 no. Probably a shield one. Like hardened shields would probably be great on this because you just you just have to sit there and tank. Amount of damage taken by shields by 20%. EMPs also reduced. What's its peak operating time? 720 seconds. It's a lot of seconds. Don't think it needs insulated. Bulkheads, more flux. Solar shielding, I guess, also is just more shield. Reduce energy damage taken by 10%. I don't know how much soft flux is generated by shields. I would say if I had to pick something, it'd be like stabilize shields and solar shielding and just go all in on being a shield god. And then maybe do turret gyros. And then you go, how high can this go? 55. <laughs> and then I'd probably build something in here. What about the command center? I don't think I need it. The op center? I I I don't I feel like I've been doing okay with recovery points, to be honest. Solar shielding reduces whole energy damage taken. Well, it's it just says in combat reduces energy damage taken by ten percent. It doesn't specify where Mama Mia look at those guns But yeah <clears throat> Um all right what was I going to do I was contemplating possibly taking a uh, fast augmented drive field. Because this is a slow vehicle. And then build that in with a story point. So that it is now a max burn of 10. <laughs> it will not be slowing us down. And then I think that one's always getting built in. Honestly, building an aux thrusters to this thing's kind of sexy because its top speed is 30. And if you build an aux thrusters, it'll go up to like 40. And you'll be just very nimble. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna build in aux thrusters. And now we got a lot more... Well, we don't have a lot more, but we have, we have some more vent space. I like somewhere in here, like Vince 46, capacitors 36. Let's give this a simulation. Who should we test this against? Let's test this against, I can't test this against the Eagles. Let's do a conquest and an onslaught and I'll probably get destroyed. Why did I just explode? I don't think I have enough to get through their shields by default. 
to be honest. Without help or support. How do you how do you use fort am I using fortress shield correctly? I don't really know how fortress shield works, but I'm about to die. Okay. 2v1 was a little much. Understandable with no support. Just do a mirror match. But it's just a crappier version of myself. It slowly builds up hard flux while active. But yeah, my top speed is 90 now. That's pretty fast. The zero flux top speed boost goes from 30 to 90. <laughs> Excuse me. Who do you think you are? Yeah, this is a bad mirror match chat. I don't really get through shields very well. He's getting through my shields better, but I need to dissipate. Oops, that's not how that works. Yeah, so it looks like my soft flux is going down, but my hard flux is going up, so it's helpful to just dissipate stuff. I need to be using it more effectively, though. Well, I'm less impressed. <laughs> I'm curious what he's... What are the two giant turrets that he's using that are just doing... I think it's my high-intensity lasers are just kind of being useless back here. These are sort of assuming I can get through shields already when that's not the case. I mean, the D mods also aren't helping, I guess. Well, they're not really causing me to be, like, worse. You know what? We'll give it a try. I'm just mostly worried about supporting it um, monetarily. While we're here, are there I need, like, an officer. I'm just going to grab... Some supplies here, I think. And pay for them at the end of the month. Okay, uh, where are we going? I was thinking about doing that mission with a with a pather base. The Ludic Path is established a base in the Koopa the Koop, Koopa Star System. The Koopa. Where's that? Oh, it's right there. And if we take it out, it'll actually help our planets because there are pather cells forming in the populace of our worlds. So destroying the pathers here helps everyone. I found a busted Paragon super early and couldn't afford it and salvaged it. <laughs> Sometimes it's what you gotta do. But you can always mothball it and put it in storage. For later. A treat for later. Uh, Bucky, thank you for the 16 month sub, dude, pumping it. Great, that was a great message. Awesome message. Well, we haven't surveyed anything here. Yeah, 
And next against Sax for the three subs. Five, well, tier three, five subs in one. You know what I mean. <laughs> But yeah, we'll give this a try. Well, well, well. Look who it is. Now, they're paying big bucks for this. So not only does it help our planets, but there's a big bounty on this. I could launch a raid against it first, but there's not really any good loot. I haven't been having good success. I'm just paying my marines to exist, it seems like. Is this a is this a difficult? It kind of looks like it could be chunky. <clears throat> so here's the thing. I think I'm gonna leave the astral out, and I'm just gonna fly the paragon. And then, kind of, like, I, I might leave the Fury out initially, because it's just so aggressive. Four ships, though, doesn't seem like a lot. What am I hitting? What is going on here? Is this just like a, there's a space rock... Thing going on like I'm in an asteroid field type of thing all right let's get the other dudes also out because this is gonna get chaotic not really sure how these escorts are gonna go to be perfectly honest with you this is going to be uh, dubious at best Okay, you go with you. You guys can both be nimble together. You go with you. You go with you. Good luck. Um. Chat, can my graviton beams shoot fighters? I thought it was only point defense. Am I stupid? Oh, chat, are we equipped for this? <laughs> That's kind of a lot of guns. I gotta watch out for friendly fire. All right, I mean, that's a good start. We just gotta take out one section at a time, right? And hit him with the lance. Do some nice EMP damage. All right, we need to start focusing this side now. They've got a lot of armor, dude. Are you guys okay? <laughs> this eagle doesn't seem okay. <sighs> okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm scared to bring the Astral in because I don't have a pilot for it. There is a rock. Maybe we just keep focusing on the, uh, the side projections first. Yeah, if we get those guys, that makes everything else easier because that's just taking guns out of the equation. Oh, I am overloading. Oh God. 
I knew that. Help! Help! Ow! I may have gotten a little close. We took a little beating. 71% combat readiness. We're fine, chat. We're good, dude. I'm chunking this midsection right here. Got one. Guys, watch out. Okay, here's the thing. There's there's too many cooks in the kitchen right now. I'm going to tell a few of you to retreat. There's too much debris also. The purple lances that we have are insane, dude. All right, can you guys take a breather before engaging the other section again? They're like, I got full flux. I'm going in. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you get to retreat too. You eagles are worrying me, dude. Oh my god, just go away. Eagle! It's gonna blow. It's gonna blow, chat. The only way is to get every, every other one to just go ham on it at, that, at this exact moment. Literally just back up for five seconds. Eagle dying after the battle was already won. I know. <laughs> okay. I, here's what I'd like to see. If I, if I could tweak the AI slightly. After a ships with an officer. After a ship with an officer successfully eliminates a target. Before they engage another target. They should check their ship's flux to see whether it is worth immediately re-engaging the next target, who, by the way, has no orders to engage. So they can do whatever they want, right? It's it's their call to be like, hmm, maybe I should get to a safe distance, deal with my flux, then re-engage. Like, just a small check there in between defeating one target and attacking the next target, when you have the option to make some distance, would be a huge change. instead of immediately engaging a completely optional target at full flux and then getting overloaded and immediately exploded. No, attack guy. It seems like you need to make them avoid. You can't make an individual avoid. I don't think you can only tell everyone to avoid and I don't want everyone to avoid. I only want people who are on the brink of overloading to avoid. That station just swooped in and cornered your poor eagle. I've also told this Aurora to engage at all costs, and they can't find... They're unable to pathfind around. Also, I have suicidal wolves pathing directly in front of my Tachyon Lances, just presenting their ass. Daring me and then crossing back in front. So my automatic dude <laughs> Come on man, stop Thank you, I just needed one more shot to get that guy 
We lost 210 crew in this, thanks to the actions of one extremely reckless captain. Who, by the way, has a range of 2,000, I'm pretty sure. Or, like, over 1,000. Because he has the... I have the longest range weapons on this guy. That's another thing that they should try to do. They should always try and go to the, like, optimal range. Uh, that would be a great, like, side micromanagement setting to have. Like, in the fleet composition page, set a desired engagement range that they will attempt uh, when it is convenient to maintain. Because that dude was like... And he can shoot from the maximum distance. I think it's because the stations rotate and it confuses them. Anyway, 200 people died for no reason. You know what that means? It means we don't have enough people to run the fleet. You got them all killed. We just made 290,000 credits, improving our rep with the Tritachian, and we disrupted the Ludic Path cells. That helped a lot. A junior officer has distinguished himself and is worthy of consideration uh, for the command of a ship. Officer promotion candidate. Interesting. Alright, I recovered the eagle. And I'm gonna salvage whatever I can get from the station. Yeah, now my crew's under strength, so I need the mothball, the chungus. And we gotta fix this thing. That was Lieutenant Swartz that's responsible for that. Who is an aggressive pilot, but a, to the, but the, that shouldn't mean they go to within 400 units of range. <laughs> If they can shoot from further back. Swartz has had problems with this before. I think so, yeah. Jimmy Shoes also almost died. I just hit the wrong button. Whee! Uh, there are some more planets to survey here. Alright, fixing up the ships, making some repairs. The Astral's fun, though. The Astral's the kind of ship I could definitely put in the hands of another pilot while I fly the carrier. I think the carrier needs a little more micro, whereas the Astral is just like, just shoot your lasers <laughs> and you'll do great. I'm not 100% convinced on the high-intensity lasers on the side, but it's okay. I think this system is done. Who is all of this? <laughs> That's hegemony, I guess. That's a large, scary fleet. So, yeah, the new officer, is he just, like, here? How do you, uh, how do you appoint them or whatever? I don't really know how to, like, turn them into an actual dude. Uh, and where do I want to go? Maybe we go do another little system. Because, yeah, told me there was a guy available. I would I would normally think that that would go in the officer UI, but it might be here. Oh, it's important. There it is. So I can use a story point to promote an officer. I don't know if I'm going to take the Astral around with me permanently or not. I guess I may as well. You're level one. 
We probably need to get a better dude put in there. <laughs> this is minus hull damage taken. Minus crew lost. So, Swartz, you just got destroyed. I don't think I should give you a promotion for getting blown up. Also, we don't need missile spec. And, like, most of my pilots have missile spec, so that's a bit awkward. I feel like Jimmy Shoes is probably the person for the job. They're the highest level. They have a ton of elite skills. But I also think they're the only thing holding this fury together. <laughs> Look at this. Combat endurance for automatic hull repair, peak operating time, impact mitigation for armor damage taken and maneuverability, uh, damage control for hull damage down, repairs continue while under fire, shield damage down, damage to cruisers and capitals, <sighs> plus one charge. The system's expertise doesn't help, but energy weapon mastery does because it's just damage at closer range. Yeah, I think Jimmy Shoes should be promoted to that. And then... The Fury should probably be piloted by one of the Medusa pilots. Yeah, I think that's fine. <clears throat> and then Gavstrav is being promoted to the Fury Cruiser at level 5. You got a promotion. So you don't have any missile mastery or anything like that. But you gotta start somewhere. So why not there? Hello Raider, how's it going? We're doing uh we just did a base elimination for the first time. That's pretty cool. Now we're doing a survey. Whilst we, you know. Look for loot, look for money, but more importantly, one of our planets is about to develop a new indus industrial slot. And we need some money to be able to fill that. I need to catch up on so many VODs. We've been doing a lot of streams this week, and we did a lot of Star Sector. Now we're in the end game. I mean, I, I consider this the end game. You can, you can still play for a lot longer yet, and there's still plenty of stuff to do, but to me, this is like... If you're flying around with an Astral and a Paragon, you're in the end game. <laughs> Even if it's the beginning of the end game. I didn't notice anything on scopes over here. Uh, I'm not. I'm only playing with Nexarellan. Other than that, there's no mods. I'm stuck in the part where my fleet is only one cruiser and everyone else is starting to run battleships. <laughs> it can happen. It'll sneak up on you. All right, we're home. Hello, I'm back, and guess what? House cat is still not done. It says 5% growth per month, but it only went up 2.5%. What's up with that? I gotta wait one more month. Where is... I'm going the wrong way. We can either go do another mission, or we can do some trading. To make some extra cash so we can afford the industry. Those are our choices. And here is beautiful home. Got a few presents for me, but not much. Probably need to buy some resources. I don't know. Or we could just go salvage, and if we go salvage, we'll probably find some supplies. We might need some fuel.
and then Stray Dog is looking okay. They've got some resource shortages. But they're at least profitable. They're making money, so that's nice. There's a shipping disruption. Trade fleets launched from Stray Dog have suffered losses. Uh, Luddic path cells are disrupted. There are active Luddic path cells in Stray Dog. They are engaged in planning acts of terror and industrial sabotage, but are unlikely to carry them off unless the overall typo I'm not making fun, I'm just pointing it out in case, you know. Level of hostile activity in the system provides sufficient cover. The cells also provide intel to pather fleets operating in system. However, base supporting these cells is no longer operational. I did that. So tech mining really interests the pathers. Population, tens of thousands of people live on. Stray dog, colony size four. Time to crush the path. I did. I did crush them. I crushed them good. I'm ready to get a different, like, the... <sighs> How many months does it take before the these ruins have been combed through turns into the next worse line? Like the you've done it all? How many more? How many months does it take to get there? Also, check. I mean, while you're thinking about that, give me, like, one sec. What's up, nerds? I'm back. I'm gonna hire some crew, and then... I think we're gonna go do another mission. Because the last one paid a lot. What OS2 is this? This is one of my favorites, Starbase. It's a good one. Good space vibes. Anyway, I'm gonna unmothball this. We need to do some repairs. It's 133 supplies, kind of a lot. The, uh, sorry, I know I'm flipping through a bunch of screens. I'm trying to find what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. I was going to check my ships to see if I had any ships I could build something in. I've, I've grown to like the Fury, and I'm willing to invest in it. It's got integrated targeting unit and hardened shields. If I was to give the Fury other things, realistically it'd have to be 
either I think the breach the breach SRM pods, right? They do uh five missile burst. You can shoot this ten times. And it seems like you're gonna be shooting that often. So I probably want missiles. Holy smokes, I found you on Twitch. I haven't seen you since your YouTube update video. Well, it sounds like you watched my YouTube update video and then didn't listen to it. Was it muted the whole time when I said, hey, I'm on Twitch now and have been for six years, Super VDF. Did you just wake up out of cryo sleep? Another lost dissenter rejoins the flock. <laughs> Welcome back, dude. But yeah, Starbase is not a game that you should play. It's a soundtrack you should listen to, though. Welcome back. We're in Star Sector land right now. Modifying a cruiser. Listening to some space tunes. I think out of the Fury, we want missiles. And... <clears throat> what else? Like, what's something else? I feel like uh, this frequently takes damage because they just boost into it. So I, I don't hate the idea of giving it, like... It has 600 armor by default. We can give it another 400 with heavy armor. That's pretty good. But I can't build it in or I lose maneuverability. Uh, okay. Let's think. You also get a debuff to expand the missile racks for building that in. But you do save five additional ordnance points. What about shield mod front? I mean, it has a 180 degree Omni shield. Why would I want front mounted shields? To be honest, I just watched old videos, totally forgot he was on Twitch until he popped up and I recommended. Yeah, things are a little different now. Super VDF. Times have changed, okay? I've changed, I'm old. You just time travel to the future. Yeah, I know what shield mod front does. I just said, why do I need it? I'm not going to be flying this. If the AI is flying, they can turn the Omni shield and aim in two different directions. I think the AI is quite good with Omni shield. Okay, let's give them... Um... I'm just gonna build in what we already have. Boom, boom. Lock both of those in. And I'm gonna try to get a pilot that has expanded missile racks to fly this, probably. Because I do like the idea of chucking heavy armor in. Just to give it a little bit more like tankiness. Because now it's a thousand armor rating. Just make it a little bit more tanky. And then throw in like 30 vents, maybe 28 vents, 20 capacitors. It's good. I think I think this is it's better now. It's it's mostly here to work in tandem with another frigate in order to take some dudes down. So fighting someone like that, it's just I'm never really going to get through the shields by myself. I'm here. This is kind of like a, a support fury. It has three burst lasers. It has a suppression turret. And it has pulse. And the pulse is some nice consistent damage. 
And it's just nice, uh, like the EMP that can arc through the shields is also nice. And then our burst can take out fighters basically like this. So yeah, like I, I, <clears throat> I just keep constant pressure, EMPs. If they vent, we try and breach a hole open through the armor. A lot of its systems are down due to the EMPs. Look at the burst lasers just taking out the uh, Sabos that are coming in. All right, they're doing a lot of them. And then I can kind of take my shields down a little bit because the armor to bring flux. And then we just start some missiles. Try to go in for the kill. I can turn my missiles on automatic fire. Wow, Point Defense just took out that entire eight. All right, it's not gonna take all those. <laughs> Why does he keep venting? <laughs> I just have my missiles on automatic fire. Yeah, the, this Fury is pretty robust. This guy, tanky. He do be tanky, yeah. I'm gonna run out of missiles. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty good. I like it. We got a level 5 pilot who will be taking over, who will make it even better with missile spec. So, they'll double the amount of missiles, make the shield tankier, extend the beam weapon range, give even more armor. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be good. Okay, I was gonna possibly do another mission. Let's see if one is available. Two hundred and thirty K. That's a lot of cruisers. We could do it. But it's very far away. This one's much closer. Uh, we gotta take down a Legion class assault battle cruiser and an onslaught and a Mora and three Dominators and a Falcon 14. Dude, come on, man. What mods, Italics? Did you read the title? That's it, baby. <laughs> I put it in the title. That's easy? I don't know if it's easy. We're gonna get burn drive. And triple dominators are still just a really, like our, our lasers are gonna take forever to crack that open. That's the hardest part. These are the fights that just take so long because they're so armored. Or I could just do trades. Wait, who's... Who's this? Just hiding outside of my base. <laughs> Where do you come from? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll, I'll get these guys first. <clears throat> Just gonna deploy all my cruisers. 
Probably just the majority of my ships. I don't know if I need to deploy our capitals. They're not that crazy. And then I can just fly... I could just chill and fly the point defense destroyer. Okay. So you go with you. You go with you. Everybody gets an escort. You walked in on them planning a surprise birthday party. <laughs> the pirates? For me? You shouldn't have, guys. Of course, I love that they always get... I feel like they always get the nav buoy. Alright, I'm going in. I'm a point defense Medusa. Alright, this is gonna get a little... chaotic, I'd say. Let's go on an eliminate order and an eliminate order. Not you. You fight that guy. While I sit up here. And run interception. On any missiles. That might be incoming. What are you doing, Eagle? Why are you turning... Why are you turning around like that? Did I tell you to eliminate somebody and you're taking it very personally? <laughs> He's like, I'm going for him. You said eliminate him. That's what I plan to do. It's okay, I got your t I got you. I got the cover. I'm here for you, bro. Okay, he's like real far away now. <laughs> he's like really far away. We should still be engaging him. Engage. Engage. And engage. It's a little dice here over here. We can be a bit more aggressive. I like what I see from the Aurora. Good snipes. Oof. That Aurora! Seeing all those heavy blasters is something primal. <laughs> Everyone pouncing on their prey. Like dominoes. <laughs> what? How? What is happening? He's still going. Off the screen. What even happened there? <laughs> Styling with some backflips. Like everybody on board the ship is just like buckled in. Maximum G force. They're trying to create artificial gravity on the walls. Okay, I think we caught the guy.
Thanks for the stuff. I'm protecting my colony. All right, let's go to Lagash. Maybe do some trading. So that we can afford to pay for heavy industry. Which we will be able to support momentarily. We're also running very low on supplies. And we got about less than half a tank of fuel. The Astral and the Paragon combo is not really helping things. Kind of makes things more expensive, in fact. Alright, 82 credit supplies, not a bad deal. I'll get some of those. And let's see if they got anything else. That might be good to trade. Uh, the best thing that we could probably do is either the Transplutonic Chat, how much suspicion do you think there is if I buy this? But then I buy this. Medium? Come on. That was four times as much? And I just bought like hundreds of supplies? You guys are you guys are crazy, dude. Okay, what if I also do some more legitimate transactions? Such as none of these. <laughs> Uh, yeah, none of those. Still medium? Don't scan me, bro. I wonder if it's worth... Trying to resell heavy armaments or if the tax is too high. It's not very much profit, but it might get my heat down. All right, Coleman Lay 4.2. None, cool. No suspicion, I'm a totally legitimate business person. Are we rich yet? <laughs> no. I'm not rich yet. We do have a lot of friends now, though. And we have a faction. And really... Isn't Star Sector all about the loot we found along the way? Hold on, wait. Let me try that again. Isn't Star Sector at its core really about the drugs we smuggled along the way? One more time. Isn't Star Sector about the pristine nanoforges we didn't find along the way? Ow. Colony growth! Alright, House Cat is finally... Got some room for development. Which is kind of a big deal. Oh, I gotta do this. Wait, I gotta do this trade under the table? I bought legitimate heavy armaments from the open market in one hegemony station, and now I have to sell them on the black market in the other station. Well, that's not gonna raise suspicion. Hold up. If we're gonna do this, let's at least do it legit. Going dark, because I have an impeccable amount of sensors compared to how far I can be detected. Can you guys go away? Can you guys leave? I got business to do. 
What's up, FB? Welcome to the stream. Chat, what are you gonna be gaming for fun on this weekend? Or rather, what are you playing? What are you playing tonight? I'm playing Watch My Money Get Drained. Almost going broke. Okay, here's what we gotta do. House cat. Hazard pay is getting cut. We're gonna have negative growth, but we can never go below our colony size of four. So now we're making 24k a month. Wow, look at that. Minus 10 to plus 24, that's a 35k swing. And we gotta pick a new industry. Hell divers, gamers in chat, Solaris, zombies, Bellatro. Okay, you're either a hell diver or a Bellatro. I'm surprised that many people are playing Bellatro. Some Tarkov, Cataclysm, Slay the Spire, Splatoon, Deep Rock, more Star Sector. I'm trying to learn Star Sector. Well, yeah, you kind of. This is the end game, so it's a little bit harder to learn. But uh, I did explain everything I did up to this point in the first few VODs. If you want to see what the beginning of a game looks like. Might be a little easier to follow along. More POW world. People like to gamba. What did you say about f buffed the hell out of flushes to win my first game of Bellatro? I heard flushes are OP, but I won with a full house. I don't know. I find full houses easier, but that's just me. I go full house deck, if you like. Nothing. <laughs> I'm sure there's more advanced stuff. Yeah, there's been a lot of games this month that are, like, vying for everybody's attention at the same time. I'm stuck! Okay. What are we building, dude? I got a second slot. We can either do refining, patrol, light industry. I think, like, do we want in... Do we want refining on planet? Smelting uh, smelting plants here convert ores and transbotonic ores into metal and transbotonics, respectively. Teleoperated robotics are used to handle most dangerous tasks. 225k in 90 days to build. It's going to cost some monthly upkeep, but we're already producing ore and ultra-rich. I mean, uh, the other ore. We're, we got rare ore and regular ore in abundance. And refining will turn that into, like, more refined goods like transbutonics and uh, metals. Respectively. It's either that or light industry, which will demand organics. So I feel like refining just makes sense. Keep it keep it local. It's being produced on station. Refine it on station. And that should make us some good money. Cuz mining is already producing like enough raw materials for the refinery to work. Uh I have less than 100,000 credits though. <laughs> So, so, we're going to have to get some money, chat. We need some money. Now they fix queues in Helldivers 2, it's great. Yeah, I saw that they expanded the servers to like 750k. Can you just let me get in here a little closer, dude? You know what? Go for it. What are they going to do? Catch me? Yeah, right. And then we take a little trip to the black market and go boom. Do they have anything else? Cool. Do a little under the table dealing. Uh, nothing great. I'll just sell these while we're here. Don't think they even noticed, or they don't care. Either one's great for me.
I think my favorite Balotra run so far was five of a kind enhanced aces with steel kings in hand. That sounds advanced. That sounds fancy. Okay, trading to stay afloat is tough. We could invest in... Not a good ROI on any of this. Eleven to twenty-three. Yeah, I don't know, dude. We only got five hundred k. I need to find some cash. I just spent like two to three hundred k. Bounty. Maybe we just need to do a bounty. But is there a bounty that's like close? Oh, it's the stupid one. Oh, they're like in the same system. Oh no, dude. They're both next to the same world. Oh. Well, um, with a giant star, it says. Probably this. They are both in the same system. We need to fix these D mods. How long has the uh, Paragon been in the fleet? Only 10 days left? I mean, I don't. They're, they're both in the same system, so I'll do whichever one is still there. I don't really have many places to go. Five days and seven days? Eh, we'll make it. Maybe. Maybe not. If you make it in system, they don't despawn, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. All right, we need to actually do this cautiously because <clears throat> if we find both of them at the same time, wait, is this not them? A yellow star? I'm in the wrong system. <laughs> well, now we're not gonna make it. This is this one's. Yeah, we're not gonna make it. Okay, never mind. Forget about that one. Where do we go? If the bounties are all done, then the only way we can make money is uh, trading, basically. So I got I got to trade something. We are going to have less debt next month because um, our second planet is actually now going to be making a profit. So that's great. And then in 90 days, they'll be done with refinery, which will hopefully make even more money. And then things will start to hit equilibrium. Meanwhile, our capital... What? Alas, the hegemony and their allies have become the dominant power in the sector. Others are slipping into irrelevance. <laughs> Already? GG clap. <laughs> okay. They're still alive. Uh, other factions are still alive. But yeah, it looks like the uh, hegemony is super dominant. I will rival them one day. Today is not that day, though. Okay, I need to trade something. 
What are we trading? Everything is equalized. Like, I can make two to one profit on some things, it's just not very good. Fuel actually is probably the best. The fuel trade. All right, let's go buy some fuel then. In I think it was Sesame. Yep. All right. Hegemony OP, please nerf. Do you get left alone if you make a colony far out in the sector? No, not really. They still find a way to bother you. They make their way out there. All right. <clears throat> we lost 73k. It's going down. It, that's less than 100k. Look, I'll take it. And then soon it'll be even more favorable. I can't believe there was like a... Yeah, the hegemony win, I guess. <laughs> That's just funny to me. Well, now I have a real challenge. Oh my god. Two Pegasus class balance battleships and a conquest. I mean, that's a tall order. That's a, that's an actual tall order. Okay, here's the thing, guys. What if I bought the black market fuel, then the open market fuel? I'm still medium suspicious. Come on, give me a break. You don't know what you're talking about. So this is a good place to hire some Marines. Two twenty one's a little high though. <sighs> Chat, all the price the, the trading has gotten hard. Trading got hard. I'll admit. Wait. There is demand, but it's just only for two hundred. Early game I was making a killing on trading and now. Or is like the best thing I could get. Buy for three, sell for twelve in system. Selling volatiles is probably the, also one of the best that you can do. Um ooh, I could buy forty five hundred organics and sell them in system for insta profit. Now that is huge. All right, chat. I need to buy all the organics and all the food from Laverna. All right, that's the play. That is the big play. That'll get us out of poverty. 300k. That's poverty, dude. I may not even have enough to buy the goods that I want to sell. Stupid hegemony bringing stability to the sector. <laughs> Let us fight. Let us fight, dude. We just want to have fun, man. I just want to go trade with the one station that's in the middle of all the other bad guys. Is that so much to ask? Stop looking at me. How am I ever going to sneak in there? I mean, I don't care about the Luddic Pilgrims. 
Okay, and there, well, there you go. You, you just sneak in there. That's all you do. I said buy all the food and all the organics. Organics first. Oh, yeah. Big buy. Huge buy. Okay, so we have uh, a few stops to make. <laughs> we can actually sell the transpatonics in system to Cha. Cha is literally right next to us. Hey, can you guys stop, like, accidentally following the exact location that I am? Looking for your fleet. No. What if I said... No. Okay, I think I need to make this trade legit. Bro, why are you interdicting everybody? Kill those guys. Who is that? They're not pursuing me. All right, who am I? What, what was I going to Cha for? <laughs> Transpatonics. They don't even want them anymore. Now Sword Habitat wants it. Okay, Sword Habitat. This is going to Sword Habitat. This is going to... God knows where. Somewhere else. This is going somewhere else. Alright, so I need to either go to Sword Habitat, or I need to go to the other place. Which is in Kazdalur. Both are good. Kazdalur is like... Oh man, we're right in the middle of both of them. I guess let's go to sword first, then. We're not the bad guys. We're not the bad... Chat, we're not the bad guys. We're, I'm not the bad guy. I'm not the bad guy. I'm not the bad guy. I'm just a business person. I'm an opportunist. Is it evil to try not to go into crippling debt? Come on. Is it? Okay, we're not getting anything at all from tech, but I can't afford to replace it either. Our income is minus 73k for the last month, but our planets are profitable, sort of. I mean, they are. We just need to make them more profitable. If we had simply settled more planets, <laughs> It's easy. Alright, that goes to sword. Both of these go to sword habitat. KJ, thank you for gifting a sub to Super VDF, by the way, earlier. Thanks for that gift sub. And for supporting the stream. A warning beacon. Who are you warning against? You know what? I'll pay my taxes. There you go. It's 40k in taxes, though. Yeah, whatever. I can't afford to destabilize the places who are losing against the hegemony. <laughs> All right, and now let's go to Kazaldur. Kazdalur. That's a very, like, Star Wars... I mean, uh, Lord of the Rings name. Very different from Star Wars. <laughs> Kazdalur. I feel like we're gonna have to be brave and just pick up a big bounty, dude. I only have 181 supplies left. Now I'm using a ton of supplies. We're gonna have to buy a few in the next spot. It's 
It's gotta be like 40-ish days until our, our uh, industry is up. I'd love to get the shipbuilder. I don't remember who we were trading with. Uh, I mean, there is a drain on our supplies called this Chungus just floating around with us uh, to look menacing. You know, we drive by and people are like, oh my God, look at that guy's fleet. He's balling out. And I'm like, yeah, I occasionally take it out for a drive. I occasionally uh, spin its wheels. Sometimes I even use it to uh, blow up the enemies. Goodbye, channel points. All right, channel points deleted. We need to make some money back big time from this transaction. I'm just gonna sell some guns too. Don't tell them I s actually, okay, fine. I won't sell the guns here. We're back to 563K. It's not the worst. Now we can buy some supplies. I only have 269. We need to go on a, uh, why can't I find this game? Because you don't know how to use Google. It's on the Fractal Softworks developer's website and has been for over a decade. It's been developed for over a decade, just had another update less than a month ago. Okay, bounties. The bounties are getting crazy. Invictus class standard dreadnoughts. Those are, that's so far away. And this one is uh, three, is two Pegasus. <laughs> With fast missile. With like five eradicators. You can take a Pegasus. Yeah, but I don't know if I can take two Pegasus and a Conquest and two champions and an Eagle and a Heron. Is that a double bounty in Sesame? It's like a bounty per frigate killed. You don't really make that much money there. Mostly it's just taking down Ludic Path. Like I could always fight for a faction and declare war on everyone else, but then, you know, you paint a target on your back and you're not an independent anymore. So I'm trying to avoid that. The exploration missions used to... 70k used to be a game-changing amount of money, and now it's like, meh. <laughs> I don't think my system can handle this. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that about your refrigerator. Or your, like, early 2000s flip phone can't play this game. That's too bad. <sighs> Here's what I need to do. I need to remove tech mining. Oh, it actually does say the ruins have been comprehensively combed over multiple times. There was little chance of a new valuable... Shut down all operations for a 60k refund. Return 40% of the construction costs. Alright, tech mining is now gone. I have 600k. Alright, that's pretty good. That's what I was waiting for. 
One Pegasus midline fleet wasted my whole mid game fleet. That's very sad. I can see that. Pegasus is pretty strong. They're a little spooky. Okay, what are we going to fill this? We have farming. This is our habitable arid world. It's hot. It has common organics, some sparse ore, and some poor farmland. So, like, we could do mining here and tap into the organics and the ore. It's not a lot, but it's pretty cheap up front, 100k cost. Uh, but mining also does pollution or something. How do, where do you see pollution and whatnot? I don't really remember how to manage that. Regulations, grants, and infrastructure to encourage thriving independent trade greatly reduces the degree of direct control the administration has over the colony. Add an independent open market the colony's owner is able to trade with, and a semi-permanent bounty on all hostile fleets may be posted as well. Colony income plus 25%. Interesting. Chat, does heavy industry make money too? It demands transplutonics and metals, which we're actually about to be making at our mining colony. But if I invest in this, I only have 100k left over. But this is what we want. <laughs> this is the goal for the day. <laughs> Heavy industry would ruin your farming? Are you just making that up or... Where does it say that? Heavy industry plus nanoforge equals pollution on habitable world. But yeah, only if you do a nanoforge. I need to build heavy industry somewhere. So we're going to have to settle another planet to do that. Um, if I wanted to keep my habitable world nice and pure, well, like I wish I would write that on the card. What I would probably rather do then... Light industry demands organics. We don't make organics ourselves. We don't have to. But I'm thinking, what if we just did mining on this planet? To take advantage of the organics and just a few extra ore? And it's very cheap up front? That way we can produce our own organics. And then when we grow again, we can do our own light industry. How many planets do I have? Two. I'm gonna do mining. It's pretty cheap up front. It'll just make some money. And let me figure out how I want to make more. <laughs> how do we want to make more? This fleet isn't too scary. But to get there, we have to go quite a ways. What's up, Crane Bolt? Thanks for 42 months. I appreciate the sub. Hope you had a nice week. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. Yeah, let's go do some pirate hunting. The nice thing is we'll probably make a profit on this because we're we're actively limiting the amount of money that we're losing each month. We've, we've taken it from 100k down to about 70k. And that number should go down even more. I'm going to be out of supplies. I just looked at my supplies. So I need to turn around. <laughs> or go to this Tritachian Terran world. 
pit stop. Just a little pit stop. They have a nice gas station built out here. <laughs> We're gonna be running on empty here soon. <laughs> uh, I think this is it. This is it. What is going on here? Alright, try tack in. Where are you guys at? No supplies. Monkos. We'll be good. Refining at House Cat Construction complete. 52,000 credits a month! Yes! Look at us now, chat. Look at the refining profits. Look at those exports. We got some money. That's huge. That's huge. So yeah, we're taking our mining here. We actually do make... I didn't realize that. Yeah, we already make volatiles. So if we wanted to process those volatiles, we absolutely could. Which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do fuel production. See, I want to do hazard pay so we can go back to positive growth. That cuts into our profit a lot. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that after we get mining at the other one. 69k. So that's not indicative of what it'll cost in the future. Only 270 supplies. I gotta buy from both. Jungle World? They settled a Terran here? What is going on in this system, man? Uh, your salvage crews find an occupied sleeper pod, which has an administrator who has joined your service. Loot. And a little scarab with some survey data for Taishan. Don't know where that is. Okay, well. While we're here, we may as well finish surveying, slash. I know this area is settled, but that doesn't mean that there's not some things for us to explore. That may or may not have loot. I can spare six heavy machinery just to see what you got. Take the planet. Just take the planet. What are you doing? Why are you not just winning the game, streamer? <laughs> All right, we need something better than regular debris fields. This might be a good debris field. Running from your fleet, you better run. I kind of need to like hurry up <laughs> though, because um, I only have like 300 supplies. Wait, did I finish? No, I didn't. I need to hurry up because I might miss the uh, the thing. The thing, you know? The reason why we came out here in the first place. AKA the bounty. We're here for the bounty to make some money. And it's kind of a big bounty. Where was it? Okay, so. Rumored to be hiding 
near a rocky ice world in a black hole system. That fits the bill. Please don't. Why are you flying around me like this? There's a lot of planets here that we can maybe scan. Um, I am running out of supplies though, so we need to be quick. We're here for a bounty to defeat a very large fleet around like an ice world and that's them. <laughs> okay, hello there. Hopefully, they have a lot of loot that they drop. The problem is, I'm gonna have to use a lot of supplies to engage them. So we're gonna go into a bit of a deficit here to make sure that we uh, clean this up. I don't think we'll need the Paragon. Famous last words. Everything else, though, I think we will need. Okay, so we're loading in. We got some control points to cap. Like the nav buoy, the comm relay, and I think the sensor jammer is another good one. And let's set up some escorts. I like my small ships to escort my large. Tempest... Go with the Fury. And then one escort for you, for you, and you. That'll get us started. All right, I'm piloting the carrier. So let's get into it. Okay. Um, we should have enough to grab the two wolves. Attach them and then get the uh, point defense discus to go with the Shrike. Good idea. Alright. We got an enemy battleship, enemy capital, but they're kind of fragile. They do bring a lot of guns to bear. Alright, so most of their fleet is concentrated in the top left, it looks like. There he is. The Conquest. That guy right there. He's like got a bunch of broadsides, basically. So hopefully nobody does anything stupid. I got six command points. I'm going to use them. Let's eliminate this dude and that dude. And then I'm going to say engage the Sunder, who's a little bit caught out of position, dead ahead of me. Uh, the Biz Payback Wolf was just instantly destroyed. <laughs> Dude. Wolves are useless now. He... Literally just... Teleport away, dude. Alright, we got a couple of them back. Um, you guys good here? Oh, we got the big boy here. I'm gonna start putting pressure on him. He's uh, giving us a little bit of a problem. Put my shield up and we need to do some new orders. Okay, we've got them mostly surrounded. They're back capping my comm relay, which isn't the worst. We can do like an eliminate order on that guy. And then I'm gonna say...
and eliminate on this guy. Engage the hammerheads. And then maybe dive that guy. Because he's almost dead. They keep backing up like perfectly. And look at that, look at that intercept. The hammerhead just beautifully intercepted all of my missile barrage. <sighs> also, the annoying thing is I have these eagles who are who are somehow getting the chase order. Start putting some pressure on shields. It's capital v capital here. We just blew up one of their sunders. Nice barrage on the side. That was clean. Keep it up. Alright, fighters. Go again! I think we gotta chase this one. His engines are down. His shields are decently high. He's overloaded. Got another side barrage. Excellent. Keep putting some missile pressure on. Nice. Get him. Boom, boom, boom. That's a lot of bad guys. It is a lot of bad guys. <laughs> that is why we are a carrier. I think we've done... Why are you guys all down there? Just tell me. Be honest. Okay, we need to engage their eagle. We need to eliminate the weenie. Engage the other eagle. Eliminate the brawler. And then engage their heavy strike cruiser. With our powers combined. Alright, I need to start moving up and left. I have to regroup my fighters to get the speed bonus. I can probably help with this eagle. They're taking out the hair. I don't like the heron very much. It seems super squishy. Alright, I got a giant carcass of a ship in between me and who I want to kill, so maybe I'll just try taking this guy on, the little brawler. And help with some of the chunguses. Oh yeah. It's go time! Get him! Bunk! <laughs> Space Rex, dude. All right, we lost a wolf and the Tempest? I was just watching the Tempest. When did it get exploded? F 
frigates, man. Frigate, you know? Tempest died in Heron Explosion. Literally just put up your shields. It's not that hard. Hydra MDM launchers, do we even have those? We do now. Gazer SRM pawns. Okay, we got some interesting stuff. And more importantly, we got 238K. They also, um, chat? They dropped something. I don't think it's worth getting, but they dropped it. This one can be fun. Very squishy, though. It's a neat ship, but I, I already have enough capitals and I need supplies. They got eagles dropping as well. All right, we got some supplies. That'll keep us afloat to explore some ruins. It's not high tech enough for me. Wait, guys, we may as well survey this system while we're here. 40 supplies! Oof. It is what it is. So we got planet over there, planet over there. It's about to be another month. We're gonna see what our like income is now. It's slowly getting better. We're finally climbing out of the like monthly debt. Not yet, but close. Sixty-four supplies a day. Yeah, that was for post-battle repairs. We actually have more supplies than we started with when we were here, so that's nice. And that's after battle and after survey. So all in all, not bad. And we'll hopefully make it back to civilization before we go back to zero. <laughs> Because I got enough cash now. 50k! Hey, that's not bad. We went from paying 100k a month to 50k a month. I feel like that's not that, you know, it's trending up. Negative 100k is harsh. Gonna go close to the black hole, give it a little scan, and then leave. We out. Now, the nice thing about our income situation is we haven't even accounted for... We got refining, and that's making us bank. But we're not accounting for the seven days to go till mining starts making even more money. So that's cool. I don't know if it's worth going here to survey. Is there anything to survey? Nope. Okay. There you go. Chad, I want to play next to Relin. Are there any settings I should change? I mean, if you want to go back and look at the settings that I ended up picking, it's in the first VOD.
That kind of depends on you. How did he get the bills to go down? I've been colonizing planets and then make trying to make them profitable. That is what you do. Okay, here just to kind of grab some supplies. If we go back to sword, we can sell both of these. Maybe we can buy some stuff on the way. Okay, yeah, that might be good. We could just go buy, go to Lagash. And then, well, supply and demand might change by the time we get back up there. <sighs> random Sector is super fun if you played vanilla. Yeah, I've been enjoying my Random Sector even though the hegemony have <laughs> dominated. What you can do to change that is like add more factions and add more starting planets. And then if you have more factions, it's probably more difficult for one to sort of become dominant. Oh, dude, this double slipstream is killing me, dude. What music is this? Music you shouldn't be listening to, chat. So don't listen to it. If I have to tell you once, I told you a thousand times. I hear nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> I guess I forgot that there was another bounty down there. Wait, that bounty's new. I could have done that while I was down there. That's free money. Now I'm already back in civilized space, so don't I feel stupid? These bounties are pretty... I mean, two Auroras is not nothing, but... There's like three bounties right next to each other up there. If there's enough time, I'll go do them. Okay, Lilu, I'm here for fuel. You know the drill. Oh yeah, you're selling it like, ooh, we could trade some fuel. In sword. I was going to go to sword anyway. Yeah. I'll buy all of it. I will also buy... All of this chat. This goes to Agenor. Sword always is buying stuff for crazy prices. Okay, Volatiles to Agenor, right now. Keep clicking the wrong button, sorry. <clears throat> it's all my fault. Dude, I'm almost done <coughs> watching a TV show. I only got one episode to go of Band of Brothers. I've seen it before. But the last time I saw it was probably like on DVD in the mid 2000s. Probably. It's. What was that? An alliance offer with the hegemony? For me? Chat, what happens if you join an alliance in this game? Is it a defensive, a offensive, or just we don't attack each other alliance? Bander Brothers, so amazing. Love that show. Crossroads is a stunning episode. Yeah, there's a lot of really good episodes. I think you have to vote on wars together. Why would they want to ally with me? I'm just a little guy. 
I'm I'm kind of just a dude that doesn't. I, I, if if you reject, does it give them a like debuff? Because I kind of just don't want to be involved. We kind of like accidentally have really good rep with them. I don't even know what I did, but we we did. Just leave him on read <laughs> and see what happens. But yeah, I think the thing that impressed me the most about Band of Brothers is the cinematography is legitimately great. It 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 is extremely filmic in its quality of camera movements set design choreography of like a lot of long takes tons of long takes that i didn't appreciate when i was a kid that i appreciate now um just lots going on very visually stimulating busy without feeling overstimulating and i think the action does a good job of not overselling it and they don't do too many like the action is also not overly long i feel like it's not just a bunch of people shooting at nothing. And then on top of that, um, Band of Brothers is another example of shaky cam working. People are like, I hate shaky cam. Oh, I love Band of Brothers. It's like, yeah, it turns out it's a technique that you can't just use in every single circumstance. But if you use it when it fits and in ways that are artistic and able to be followed by general audience, then you get a good product. It's not always bad. It's just bad when the wrong people are using it. Okay, uh, we need to go back to Blue Ox and get supplies. All right, we're down to 45K. We're moving in the right direction, chat. If we wanted to go sell to the Ludic Church, it's 25 light years away to make a 4 to 1 ROI. <laughs> we could actually bring them a whole stockpile. <laughs> I don't wonder if that's worth. They have a buy order for supplies, for fuel. I guess the basics. Eh, 25 light years is really far. Possible to destabilize an economy? Yep, you, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. Okay, let's buy luxury goods from Pi Ramses, which is in this system, and domestic goods from Pi Ramses, which is in this system. Domestic and luxury. Spicy. All right, there's some spicy trades here. All right, luxury and domestic. Oh, I need to buy supplies. Like quite a few of them. Bro, <laughs> going broke again. And then Pi Ramses is here. Luxury, domestic. Luxury, domestic. Oh, they got a lot. Uh, they'll buy like 500 of them. So we could buy a few more. <clears throat> And I'm looking to sell at least 3,000 of these. Let's get another 2K if I can afford it. That's 3K. All right, whatever. No, I can't afford that. We're going to go broke.
All right, I got 47,000 bucks. Hopefully I don't go bankrupt. Let's go. <laughs> All in on trading the sword. Don't do it. Dude. I avoided the interdiction pulse. Oh, nice. The Born Identity sequels dot dot dot. I think you you kind of trailed off there. What you even say was were perfect. And the Born Ultimatum is one of the best conclusions of a trilogy that's ever been made. Up there with uh, the Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. Pretty sure that's what you meant. Shaky Cam and then made me ill. If if the Born series Shaky Cam made you ill, then your genes are too weak uh, to continue surviving. So I hope you don't have kids. Didn't the Born series create Shaky Cam? Basically. Basically, yes. The, the, the Born Identity popularized it. And it is artisanally done. And I'm not exaggerating. There are a bunch of really good video documentary essays on why... Other movies that have attempted to copy the shaky cam of the Bourne series have failed and compares them in interesting ways to the Bourne trilogy and shows why uh, it is the best. Though, I would say honorable mention to Saving Private Ryan, which has a, has a shitload of shaky cam. Um, and Band of Brothers. It usually benefits from being a war movie. But then, the Daredevil TV show on Netflix released a, um, below-average choreographed hallway fight scene and then ruined Shake Camp Forever by tricking people into thinking that the only way to shoot any action is for a camera on a tripod. So then we got, um... Star Wars, sequel trilogy, episode two's um, awful Royal Guard segment. <laughs> <laughs> Among many other things. Yeah, I mean, Blair Witch is a different kind of movie. Children of Men also has a lot of handheld and pretend handheld. Children of Men's probably the perfect marriage between handheld slash fake handheld and long take shots. But yeah, Shaky Cam is another example uh, in um, Children of Men. Some of the best movies ever made utilize Shaky Cam. I would definitely put Children of Men in the category of, like, one of the best movies ever made. Easily. Sword Habitat, am I selling anything to you? Or no? Or is it all to the pirates? This sells for 102 here. Why is it selling for so much? You know what? I'm sorry to destabilize you, but I really need money right now. You have you have no idea. You have no idea. I apologize for the chaos this might create. But we are broke. Uh 
Okay, so it's uh, this to Sword View Pirate Station, which is just down the road. Uh oh. Are you guys okay? <laughs> anyway, I can understand people who got sick during, like, Cloverfield. Cloverfield, that makes sense. I get it. Because that's intentionally shot in, like, a... More than handheld. More than shaky cam. It's like closer to Blair Witch level of found footage. That one, that one's, you get a pass. Because it is disorienting. I didn't get disoriented because I am mentally and physically stronger than you. But I understand if that occurred. I like Cloverfield. I also like Cloverfield, actually. I enjoyed it. I didn't know that there was like a counter push against it until afterward. Because I was like, whoa, this is the coolest movie I've ever seen when I was like a kid. Uh, the whole like marketing campaign leading up to its release was like... Before I knew what the term viral marketing was, it was there. Like it was so far ahead of its time in terms of having like... There was, an, there, there was a very vast, deep... Um, amount of lore, a huge ARG that tied into uh, Cloverfield that you could spend hours catching up on. There's a lot. There's a lot of secret Cloverfield lore. The announcement of the movie, I saw the trailer for Cloverfield unannounced. Nobody knew it existed and my mind was blown. I was like, I have to see this movie. Like the, the, the surprise trailer what was it in front of? Was it like Transformers? I want to say it was like Transformers. Yeah. Uh, ahead of 2007's Transformers. So I was like 18 watching Transformers and seeing Cloverfield. I was like, damn, that was cool. I got to see this. And they never even announced what it was. It was just a rogue trailer that they inserted. Yeah, the it, looking up if you look up Cloverfield viral marketing and ARG and stuff, it's actually a really interesting rabbit hole to go down. Would recommend. Here's some drugs. Here's some domestic goods. I'm just gonna get rid. Actually, I'm gonna hold the transmetonics. Here's some organics. They're paying a good amount for fuel. I think I'm going to go ahead and sell. Paying a reasonable amount for supplies as well, but we'll just settle with that. All right, we're back at the 500k. I feel like we're barely making ends meet here. <laughs> That'll buy us enough time to go do... Like a bounty? I remember it had a cool Cryptic Web 2.0 website. Yeah. Like a like a front, like a fake website. It's one of the first times I'd ever seen that. Okay, so there's only like three bounties. One's that one's easy. This one's easy. This one's probably hard. I assume there's like a lot of cruisers in this fleet because it's a 300,000 credit reward. Um, so I don't know if it's worth going up there. Bizok the Gamer, thanks for 19 months. Appreciate the sub. Good evening. Thanks for priming. Kelly McChess also for 61 says, didn't I have a sub uh, two days ago? You might have. Who can say? I don't remember what happened two days ago. Especially if you don't. Then we're all up a creek. Uh, Socks on the lawn also thanks for 16 months. And I appreciate the tier one sub. The problem... Yeah, I guess we should go up here. 49, 44, 
This one doesn't have any days remaining. Let's do the easy one first. They're in a giant primary star. Probably that one. <sighs> Spooky. Alliance offer expired. Will I regret this? Maybe. But yeah, we might be equipped for the really, really tough one. We do have an Astral and a Paragon now. So we've got two capital ships to bring in. I got a decent amount of gas. 1,200 supplies. We're doing okay. Might try and hit this trio of bounties. Problem is, I need enough money. Uh, I think the mining ops are, are underway. It's not really making us that much money. Just between farming and mining. But we still got growth. Hazard pay might be worth it for only like 5k. Just to get some growth. House cats got negative growth. It's credits per month are down. I assume because we're not getting the imports of heavy machinery that we need. Chat, how do you make your own supplies? It is not... Okay, heavy industry, yes. <laughs> Waystation doesn't help them with supplies. That lets you buy supplies. Because I have Waystation to both. And we have a supply shortage. Alright, who are we looking for? Is this the pirate place or a different one? This is the pirate base. All right, let's go. Get out of here, you stupid nerds. Oh, we have to fight the ships too? I feel like this is enough. This is kind of a small station. We let them go in. And then reinforce. With at least a couple destroyers. Alright. I'm, I'm taking a back seat for this one. And we're going to watch the boys and see how they do against the station. A lot of nonsense going on. Don't need to worry about that other side. I need the eagles to get in. I like what I see. Finish the job. Please. Okay, there you go. Here's what I need you to do. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Then worry about the big chungus. Don't get so close to the big chungus. You're getting too close. You're lucky he's on the nice side right now. Then we need to engage the station proper. You 
guys make me nervous. If you're an eagle, you go in. Okay, those are the rules. You can't just be sitting back, not using your lasers. That's what I pay you for. You're supposed to keep pressure up. They're doing their best. Well, they've blown up all those stupid spires. I don't know why they're so obsessed with that. Tanky meatball, dude. Good God. Unlimited health. Chat, can anyone tell me why my eagle's graviton beams aren't just firing 24-7? With zero flux. He just turns them on and off. I like it when my cruiser doesn't get overly cocky in the face of certain victory. It's somehow it's always like when we're certainly going to win and there's only one target left They're like I'm gonna go die now <laughs> Literally just back up a little Jesus Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory We almost blew up we lost seven crew Mostly we did it for the 110k bounty. Okay, we need to do some repairs. We, the hegemony really likes us. 58. We're super friendly. And we're going to salvage the wreckage a little bit more. Alright, we should actually... Isn't it in system? Hold up. What are the other bounties? You're a gas giant in the ROM system and in a trinary star system. Where's ROM? This is ROM. They're here. No! You can e-burn while transverse jumping? <laughs> this is a gas giant. There's two. Crew starting their celebratory drink before the <laughs> the fight even ends. Dude, Hegemony is wiping all the other uh, factions off the map. It's gonna be Hegemony space in this campaign soon. Okay, hopefully we got everything repaired. All right, this time we're gonna bring in some backup. That's a lot of cruisers. I'll bring in the Astral. My side, comm relays, their side, sensor jammer and that buoy. Come on, dude. Why do they get the good stuff? I swear it's always like that. AI's gotta cheat.
Tempest. Go with the Shrike. Point Defense Destroyer with the other dude, and then we're good. All right. Carriers coming in. Chat, do you think we'll ever be profitable in this campaign? Better question. Do you think we'll be profitable in this campaign today? <laughs> Will we be able to solve the monthly deficit via colonization efforts? I feel like I should colonize again. I was confused why you were staring at the map screen for like two minutes, but then I unpaused. Not today, that's for sure. How freaking dare you? Why would you say that? All right, good job getting the nav buoy. If you establish one or two new colonies, perhaps, but need a cool mill to build stuff. Yeah. Dude, their hound retreated immediately. What? <laughs> That's a lot of enemy ships. I'm not quite in range to help yet. There we go. Very good. All right, bring everybody home. We've had a devastating first strike. I saw a bunch of disabled ships on their side. I think I have to trust my pilots and focus on the task at hand. Kind of shredding my fighters a little bit. Need to repopulate. Get the shield back up and take on some easier prey, I think. You're in a little too close, buddy. Okay. Uh, maybe I should give some orders. Let's have an engage order here. I still feel like there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, maybe an engage order here. And then... We're going to kind of abandon this spot if we're not careful. I'm here. So maybe with these guys repositioning to the right, I focus on the top. some of these guys. Alright, this dude's got a flame out. Keep just picking him off one at a time, dude. Ooh, nice. Those lasers... All right, everybody's home. Let's start chipping away at the next cruiser. I 
feel like we're repopulating our fighters pretty fast. Nice. <laughs> that scarab. Just like coming in real hot, dude. What are you thinking? Okay, we need to uh, eliminate the Falcon. We need to eliminate this guy. We need to eliminate this guy. There we go. We need to chase everybody down and maybe capture that point while we're at it. And then I think we got this. Combat readiness will start decreasing soon. We'll be it will be finished soon as it happens. The battle has been fierce. But victory is ours. Okay, two dudes get away. I'm gonna let him go. Honestly, good fight. That was worth 145k. Money is this it's okay. The money's okay. We're also getting resupplied pretty nicely here. I keep running into this scenario as well. I get to deploy X amount of points and the enemy gets double or triple that. Yeah, you get more points when you capture Um Are you talking about like the reinforced points? Because, yeah, once you capture a couple of control points, you get more to play with. So that helps. There's a huge 300 mil bounty hiding out here. I don't know if we could take them. Did I say 300 mil? I didn't mean 300 mil. Is this bounty paying a lot? 300 milli. <laughs> I'm gonna be a wealthy man after this. Yeah, if you expand the max amount of deployable ships, that's that's for the whole fight, not just for you. All right, well, I'm going to at least, like, check this out and see if it's a fight we can take. Somebody else is also just out here patrolling. There might be a pirate station. Okay, I mean... Two Auroras is spooky. They have some good fighters. But we should be able to handle it. I say we deploy the Astral for this one. I mean, the, the Paragon. I can't really say it because this is Iron Man. Iron Man. But yeah, we should bring up the Paragon for this. Which, by the way, has all of its demods fixed. <laughs> Which is very nice. Alright, yep. The Astral and the Paragon. Uh, Aurora of our own. The Eagle. The Fury. And then... Two Destroyers. Cap that. Cap that. Cap that. And then we'll work on the nav buoy beta. Look at us! Me and the boys rolling out. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
they don't know what they're up against. All right, I got 20 deployment points left, and that's it. Let's go ahead and use some of them. We don't really have any escorts. You're an admiral now. I feel like an admiral. I'm going to I'm going to miss our little fighters. I mean, our, our frigates, as it were. They got a Tempest? I don't know how we're going to catch the Tempest. If he does not want to be caught, he will not be. Um, where are you going, Aurora? Where the hell? Bro. Help is on the way. Am I gonna get more deployment points for this? Is this what you were talking about, where it feels like they have way more ships? I just put out really expensive ships. I guess. All right, I want an eliminate order on you. You and you, but I need the eagle to come in sort of versus their eagle. All right, me and the astral got to bully this eagle. <laughs> He's basically dead. <laughs> he got roasted. And toasted, bro. <laughs> and what is a hammerhead? When you are an astral. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna say... Go ham on these guys. Captain Nav buoy. You guys handle all that, and we gotta start swinging to the right. What's up, little dude? Yeah, you've got some fighters coming your way. Oh, enemy Aurora. Get in awfully close. Whoops. Defend the hive. I got this chat. Let me go down that easy. I'm a tanky boy, too. The guy was got. I respect the dedication to diving on my ship. You know, that was cute. What's that Aurora doing? Just hiding in the back. Alright, I gotta, like, go to the right and help over there. This is where I am needed. 
Why are you not hitting him with the tachyon? There you go. <laughs> These dudes are probably shitting their pants right now. <laughs> Like, if you're in these ships over here, when our capitals are rolling in... Oh, you are brave. Very brave. Another attack run, boys. Missiles away! I love watching that barrage. Uh-oh. This mule's backing up slowly. Like, my man's turning around right now. He just got done blowing up that dude from across the damn map. And then the Tachyon Lance comes up the rear. <laughs> Should be it. Carnage. I like it when you just see all the lasers get brought onto the same target. Those high intensity lasers on the Astral are doing some work. I mean, the Paragon. I keep wanting to call that an Astral because it's in the shape of an A. It's in the shape of an A, dude. Basically, the same thing. I can recover another Aurora. Two! I get both of them if I want. Honestly, did we just take those and put them in the Tempest? And the omen? Do we just go boom, 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 and just put those in storage? <sighs> For a rainy day. I wish you could personally donate your ships to a patrol fleet. Like, fix them up and put them there. Vengeance is cool, but not at this stage. We leveled up, chat. Max level, level 15. I can either get gain non-elite helmsmanship, damage control, combat endurance, and ordnance expertise for all ships without an officer. Or uh, able to build in one more permanent hull mod into every ship. And you get more deployment points. That one sounds like the one that I want, the deployment points one. But this one sounds really powerful too. Deployment point cost reduced by 20% or 10 points, whichever is less. All ships without officers are just cheaper to field. I don't know. I think the whole mod one. You can also just get both of the officer bonuses. So you can have Omega Officers. You can have like plus two available officers and they all get an extra level and an extra elite skill. Or I can make the ships better. I don't know, I like the whole mods. Let's do whole mods. We're back to a cool million bucks. And we got a bunch of ships, I need the mothball. Boop, 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 boop. Save us a bunch of supplies. It's vibrating! <laughs> I actually, like, impressed that we were able to take that on. That was a 300k bounty, man. Is there another pirate base here? In the Zeta Sheath Ma. That's the star system that we're in. But we don't know where. I 
Hyperion class advanced gunship. Possible addition to the fleet. I'll take it. Maybe they're up here. Something's on scopes up here. Hello? Well, well, well. If it isn't the pirate den. You better run. That's right, you better run. You better get out of here, cowards. Okay. Now I can just simply... Probably not uh, a raid, because it's too dangerous. But yeah, we can just take them on by ourselves. Continue into battle. Alright, this is a big station. I don't feel like losing ships arbitrarily. So I'm just going to take both of the, the big boys, two of the eagles, the aurora I feel like always almost dies, point defense medusa, some omens. Just let the big dogs hash it out. See how it goes. I mean, we ba this is basically a space station right next to us. <laughs> We're getting hit by all sort of debris. How much damage does that do? This is why we brought some point defense. They shouldn't be that advanced, but what we need to do is make an engage attack order to make sure everybody is actually trying. And we're going to have to pick a side. It's got three pronged sides. I guess this is the one for us. Let's start peppering it with... Uh, it, it, they've got their own point defense, I guess. I might need to back up here. Because I'm taking a lot of flux. I'm taking a lot of flux, actually. And here come some bombers. <laughs> I think all of my fighters just drove into the bombs. Which is very unfortunate. Alright, they're doing a pretty good job crisping it up. I can go ahead and vent. Get back in. Alright, I'm coming back into the fight. <clears throat> the Ast I mean, the Paragon's doing crazy. Sky garbage is flying your way. <laughs> yeah, we're getting hit by like every one of those tiny meteorites is just like bird poop on the windshield. You're welcome, Hegemony. You are welcome. Alright, that's another 130k. That's pretty good money, actually. Um, big profit. The donut is a station killer. Yeah, it really is. I think we head home to make sure there's no trouble on the home front. Now that I have wrecked their um, pirate base and all their friends. What if you didn't do that?
What if you didn't interrupt me? This ghost. How much longer till near Earth orbit has too much debris for us to leave? The good news is, uh, we'll all be dead before that becomes a problem. <laughs> Holy shit, man. What? It's true. Not, it's not going to be your issue. I see there's some Luddick dudes here. I was responding to the ghost. Oh. I see. But yeah, it's going to be a while before the events of Gravity, the movie, become reality. Hopefully. And Sandra Bullock gracefully navigates between the ISS and multiple other um, stations in orbit that are actually thousands of miles apart on a different axis. There's a Sandra Bullock in space as we speak. Exactly. Exactly. We're home! My house. All right, I'm gonna put my little ships up that I just got and figure them out later. I might keep this little dude. He's just a little frigate dude. And he's got a couple. This was actually a fun ship to pilot for a little while, to be honest. Because you got three medium hard points all facing the same direction, which is kind of neat. And it can teleport to any desired location nearby. It's pretty cool. So you have a lot of options, right? You can do like pulse laser for generic damage. Um, plus graviton beam for sustained shield damage. Plus an ion beam for suppression. You could do like a heavy blaster build. You could use the medium universal for whatever you want. Torpedoes, missiles, more beams, ballistics. It's a nice mix and match platform. And we got a lot of missiles. Like, it might be fun to put the Gazer SRM anti-shield pod on this guy. And then augment that with a phase lance. And then maybe even throw an ion beam on there too. It's pretty good. Phase lance is only 600 range though. Ion beam's a thousand. I generally like to match the range. You could even do double phase lance. Or just a pulse laser. Because then you have some shield. You have some multi damage. Phase lance is two, but it's primarily for the hole. I like double ion pulsar on it. I guess I just never use the Ion Pulsar. The Flux scares me. I know it's strong, but the Flux is spooky. I usually go with, like, mid-range. Bring that balance. I'll try this first. Pulse, yes. But yeah, doing double something is also good. 
And then on this little guy, what kind of shield does he have? Front shield, 300 arc. Pretty good. Eighty-four second peak performance. That doesn't seem good. <laughs> All right, so hardened subsystems, at least initially, until unreliable subsystems gets fixed. So definitely hardened subsystems into. How fast is it? Burn is 10. Pretty quick. What's its speed? 122. I think it might benefit from Ox Thrusters just to be nimble, because it has a bunch of front-facing mounts. And then maybe just vents. And caps, and leave it at that for now. Kind of, Kind of basic. Basic, but probably good. It can go. Pew. Look at that teleport. I don't think I can win against the Sunder. What are you charging? But I can do this. New. They're not huge fans of this constant shield pressure here. And then I just almost can't be hit. Unless I want to. Ah! That's not the laser I thought it was! <laughs> That's a... <laughs> it's not a graviton. It's a high intensity beam. Oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think the Hyperion got nerfed. But either way, we were, we were fighting up. It's um, it's still a pretty decent little ship here, and it'll be better once these go away. We'll just leave it the way it is. We have room for another pilot. There's an officer available. What can you do? Helmsmanship, steady level one, you're hired. Welcome aboard the fleet. You'll go in the new ship, actually. Put a little strength in the Hyperion. Okay, and now that we got some cash... Our weapon stockpiles have grown quite large. We have plenty of money in here if we really wanted to, like, cash out. I got a lot of BPs. Also, I need to look at stuff we have that upgrades. I have a hypershunt trap. We can't use that. Hypershunt tap. Can't use that. Corrupted Nanoforge. Not yet. Uh, this buffs light industry, which I do want to make. This buffs ground defenses and heavy batteries. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. Mass produces a number of drone variants suited to various tasks related to planetary defense against raids and invasions and local security. Its use was banned by the domain many cycles prior to the collapse, so it's surprising to find a working sample in the Persian sector. Colony ground defense increased by 1.5x. And this is for commerce. Dealmaker Hollow Suite. So we have a few neat things. But let's just chuck that in the ground defense. And then my spaceport has colony accessibility up. We can also upgrade this to a megaport. Which will increase the accessibility bonus and the population growth. And that'll be about 300k. I could assign some AI cores, but I've been resisting the temptation. I could also spend story points on stuff if I really wanted to. The thing is, this is already gonna grow. 
It could just grow faster. Mega port. I don't know if it, how much is what does access do for us right now? Imports and exports can import and export more goods and claim a greater market share. We don't have great farming, we don't have great mining, but I wanted to start small. All right, fine. 150 days. Big investment. House cat's having some trouble getting resources. And they have negative growth. I'm just going to upgrade both of these to a mega port simultaneously. Because I need to get this at a negative so we can keep getting space for industry. And then, isn't is there another planet in the system that we wanted to possibly establish a colony on? This is 175% Azure rating somehow. It's not bad, but no real resources. There's a volcanic world here too. But I think that had a really high like hazard. Ludic Path is also active on our home planet again. Who this? Pirates? What are you guys doing here? We need to get rid of these dudes. Alright, lads. Divide and conquer. No, I accidentally hit retreat, which just wasted a command point. All right, let's let's observe. What do we spend the money on? Like literally ten seconds ago, I just spent six hundred k on mega ports. Liter mere moments ago, almost no time at all. <laughs> I got here five seconds ago. Well, then sit down and shut up. Okay, continue chatting with fewer questions. Wipe on the floor with these dudes. Yeah, the stream started uh, six and a half hours ago. I'll have you know. Not 15 seconds ago. These guys are way tankier than they have any right to be. All right, eliminate that hound. <laughs> I like how they're all kind of backing off of this dude. Got a couple of high-tech frigates close to each other. I don't know if we need reinforcements. I'm gonna say let's just not be greedy. say let's not be greedy. I could even pilot one of the wolves. I 
mine now. Ooh, that phase lance. All right, I got myself a Cerberus. I feel like everything else is going pretty well. Let's get the zero flux speed boost and move on to our, I gotta remember, I haven't done a frigate in a while, so I don't wanna get overzealous here. We don't have a lot of defense against, um, well, actually, we do okay against fighters, I guess. Maybe I just go for one of these dudes. I'm floating. I'm helping. I think. Maybe. I'm helping. Look at all this help, dude. I got a bunch of missiles that I haven't even used. They're all just clustered together here. Let's get those guys. What are you doing over there? I'm doing this all by myself while this ship's overloaded. Blowing up with a purple beam. All right, now I need to get out. I forgot how nice it was being nimble and fast and a wolf. Being able to respond to things like this, like... Just sneaking in. Launching a couple of anti-shield measures. Getting some phase lance. Punishing an overload. Trying to cause a little flame out. Your flagship's combat readiness! He's almost dead. Nicely done. The enemy fleet is defeated? I don't know, I still see bad guys. What do you mean? Who's this then? Is this XCOM? No, this is X4. It has an X in it though. <laughs> Different though. Oh, that dude. His combat readiness is terrible, yeah. Alright, I tried to kill as many of them as I could. They're in my system. Gotta take out the stinky pirates. I don't play Iron Man, but if I have to reload more than a few times, I lose attachment to the campaign. Very accurate. Yep. I am the same way. I understand. Okay. What can I do? In this tireless churn of trying to make enough money to live. I just need enough money to live. <laughs> There's only three bounties. Wait. That's a huge bounty, but I have to kill two Onslaught, an Outdated, and a Standard. Two Eagle 14s, a Grindle, a Dominator, and an Eagle, and then a few more. Watching this has inspired me to fly around in an astral like a Chad. 
<laughs> you take fights. You say, bring it on. I got fighters. Where are they? A binary star system? I don't know, man. That's a... That's a tough call. That just doesn't sound like a fun fight. Have we fought a Grindle before? No. <laughs> I fear it. I am afraid. How much money is it? Irradiated world? Two fifty nine K. It's pretty good money. But there's two fleets. You didn't say there were going to be two fleets. My expenses are back to eighty one K for some godforsaken reason. Not only are there two fleets, there's a freaking station there, dude. Also, it's two more eagles. So, four eagles, two of them are legions, a Grindle, a Dominator, two capitals, and then a bunch of hodgepodge destroyers and frigates. It's kind of risky. Like, we only have two Eagles, and then we have a light cruiser and an Aurora. So we're outnumbered in terms of combat-capable, like, heavy-duty ships. We're just outnumbered in general. Yeah, and they almost have no D-mods as well. I think that this would be an uncomfortable fight against four eagles. Like, <clears throat> we need to get to the point where we can get another cruiser. Two capital, five cruiser. Sounds a little better. <laughs> Maybe another Aurora. Plus, they're next to other guys. Yeah, I think I think we just bail. Because we're going to end up having to fight whoever's next to them as well. And possibly the station. So, I, I'd rather not. So... We'll find something else. Maybe a trade. Eternal Fellowship joins the war against the hegemony. But yeah, I think the thing chat's like, you have more ships. Yeah, but they need uh, hundreds of supplies, <laughs> fuel, support. Logistics. And to remove their demods, which takes months. And um, to be outfitted. So, you know. Just a handful of things. And I have less than 500000 in cash right now. So, I don't exactly have time for that. So I need to get supplies. These are cheap. Maybe we do some trade. If I wanted to do a run up 25 freaking light years, 
the Ludic Church in Morta wants, I don't know why they settled so far away, but they, they want a bunch of things, like raw materials. In the Epsilon Nysa star system. I don't know if it's worth going all the way up there, because I'm going to use more fuel than I have to sell them when I get there, which is kind of awkward. It's probably not worth. <sighs> that being said... Are we just going to go back to sword? We always go to sword. Sword will buy food. Sword will buy some organics. Sword will buy metals. Hmm. Looking at my options here. And sword will buy heavy machinery. Okay, so here's the deal. We go to Lefiral. We gotta go to Lefiral, but first I gotta go buy some fuel. Store everything but your transports and just YOLO over. <laughs> Just to, like, get, get all the combat ships cut. <laughs> it's like 25 light years a long way away, man. Long way. It's on, it's on the edge of the galaxy. All right, Lilu. Show me what you got. That's a decent amount of fuel. Okay, so we are going to... Lefiral to Umu first. Make a big buy. We only have 270k. <laughs> I don't know how big a buy we can make. I'm going to be selling a bunch of metals, though. We'll figure it out. And by the time we make this sale, some new bounties will be available. I need to go to... Umu. Edge of the Galaxy sounds like a sick album name. It's either an album name or the name of one of the Disney Star Wars locations. Wait, it already is a name, I think, of the Disney... Right? Isn't it Galaxy's Edge? Pretty sure it is. Okay, we're here to buy food. Just a just a lot of food, I think. Just so much food, chat. Hang on, I can buy this for 14 here and sell it for 41 also here. Uh, I have too much stuff. I'm just gonna sell the metals to make room. They want about 3K, so I'm gonna get them 4K. We have too much, all right. So turn around and just sell this to both at the independent station, which is literally right here. <clears throat> I'm not going to try and sneak in there. 
bit of a hornet's nest. Wait, now the viral dock is paying more? All right, I don't care. Just sell it. Get rid of it. My taxes. Okay. Best place to buy supplies is at Umo. So I'm going to go there and buy the supplies. That's more money than I have. <laughs> uh... Okay. I was going to buy something else to take to sword. I can take I can take regular supplies to sword. What else can I take? I just sold the metals. Yo, the pirates are paying for heavy armaments? <laughs> 400 of them? Don't mind if I do. Which I don't have that much money. Give me some money. Uh, sell some fuel? Just to... No, that won't work. Can I take out a loan? <laughs> Yo, can I take a loan out, dude? Please? What if I just sold you all of this stuff? Not good enough? I, I can't give this- I already bought the supplies. I can't give them back. Wait, did I already buy them? All right, fine. I can only buy 200k worth of stuff, man. I'm gonna go broke. Whatever, this is enough. I'm just gonna take it and run. We're going to sword, let's go. Gotta go fast. Oh, it's almost the next month anyway. So if we go bankrupt, hopefully they don't abandon me. We'll see what happens. I got a story point. Buying battle mechs from the hegemony to sell to the pirates? That's very the expanse of us. All right, we are now completely broke. New missions popping up. That's good. I wonder how much longer the megaports need. We could afford it if we never paid our taxes. Yeah, but then I have to sneak in, and that's the hard part. I don't feel like I'm losing money and time by slinking around, you know? All right, we gotta get this first. Sword view. Both of these are going to sword view. Which I believe is always under attack. They hate the pirates. A lot of chaos in this system. All right, now we're actually supplying arms to the pirates. Listen, we're Walter Whiting right now. Like I win, I'm in massive amounts of debt. Who is this? Not my problem is who. Here you guys go. Thanks for the cash. <laughs> you want some prisoners? I got six prisoners. Yo, you want some heavy machinery, bro? I got you. I got you. You want... Uh, what else you need? What else you need? You need some uh, some crew? I can hook you up, dog. Yo, you guys need fuel or something? Alright, I'll hook... I got you. Um... 
You want some crazy price supplies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, no problem, no problem. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Single-handedly <laughs> supplying the entire pirate station. I'm their biggest customer, man. That was a crazy deal. They love your product. Yeah, they want, they want what I got. That's the truth. Just give me all the cash, dude. And then I'll turn around and just buy some cheap stuff from somewhere else. Maybe we should go back to Lefiral. All the other factions are just wondering how the pirates are getting supplied. <laughs> Conquest mission. Take Grim from Sindri and Dicta for 957,000 credits. It's easy, dude. What are you waiting on? Just go declare uh, declare war on the Sindri and Dicta. Can you take a planet without declaring war? She'd be like, I'm just a merc. I'm not at war with you. I just wanted to take one of your planets. It's nothing personal, dude. Phaeton class tanker right there. We can be friends with the pirates, just not the path. I mean, I'm not friends with the path. However, I have, you know, profited off of them. Once or twice. All right, we need to be at Umu. And then Abraxas Mantle. This is Abraxas Mantle. For their cheap fuel. And honestly, the crew's not bad. Okay, suddenly we have money again. <laughs> Ain't that nice. And uh, 80 days left on the spaceport. House cat, yeah, both of them got 80 days. Stray dog is still growing. Slow. We need to get a third colony going. That's what we really need. We need a third colony. It is worth the initial investment. What does it cost? Like a thousand supplies? And some people? We only lost 43k. That's good! Ooh, what the hell's going on here, guys? Okay, I'm just gonna buy an extra thousand supplies compared to what I actually need. My money's gone. <laughs> I had it, now it's gone. We could do the thing where we go supply the Morta. They want like 2,000 supplies, 3,000 fuel. Okay. <clears throat> How many crew do you need? to settle. It's like a few hundred, right? Why are they all so dang expensive here? Isn't it like 400 or something? It's not a thousand crew. Is it? It's a thousand. I thought it was a thousand supplies. Or do I have it backwards? Is it a thousand crew and like a few hundred supplies?
yeah, there's a limit to how many colonies you can control to some extent. It's complicated to explain. But yes, there is a limit. It's kind of like how Stellaris limits it. Maybe I got it backwards and it's not a thousand supplies. It's only like two to four hundred supplies. So I just bought a bunch for no reason. The problem is there's no one that is giving me cheap people. I need to get some contracts. I need to buy their contracts and be like, come work for me. I'm going to send you into this beautiful, wonderful new utopia. The likes of which you've never seen. Let's go to Mizzo. Let it, Morgana. Yeah, let's go up there. I mean, the supplies, the supplies were still cheap. Yeah, we need heavy machinery too. All right, we'll get that from there as well. Tritachian wants an alliance with me? Um, I accept. I don't know what that means, but why? Why did we name the alliance the Fimto Tech Guild? What does that mean? We could have called it like the Tribiz, the Biz Biztakian, or the, you know, there's there's a lot of potential names. Fimtotech. What does it mean? Okay, well, I had money, and now I'm running out of money again. <laughs> Classic. So it's like tech the size of a proton. It's like nanotech, but smaller. Oh, the Luddick! Uh, yeah, the dudes that we rescued. I forgot about them. They've just been on our ship chilling for months. You've arrived at a colony controlled by the Church of Galactic Redemption, suitable for offloading the Luddick heretics you rescued. Shuttle them to Mazo. I forgot that they were even there. As promised, you allow them to disembark. Their shuttles are met by a serene curate backed by a pair of frowning knights of Lud. The curate welcomes the refugees as they bow, hands clasped, or fall to their knees in repentance. Through, though the church shall now shows a face of reconciliation, the knight inquisitors will surely come later for a full accounting of their sin. Lost 200 crew, gained 20k XP, gained some Ludic church rep. Cool. Well, now I need even more people, dude. All right, so we need like over a thousand. Okay. And then heavy machinery. It's a little pricey here, I gotta say. It is what it is. All right, now, where are we gonna do this? So, this is our home system. Is it really, I don't, like, it's 250% hazard rating is a lot, but they do have ultra-rich rare ore and ultra-rich ore. Is it, is it worth dealing with 250% hazard rating for the extreme ore, or just say, nah? Uh, we also have a stinky gas giant, but it does have low hazard. We have an ice world that's fairly low hazard that has moderate or we have a rocky world. Oh, the rocky world. Yeah, it's 200 percent, but it is um, widespread ruins and abundant ore. And then we already have house cats settled. Now, there's better worlds out there. Yeah, mining, refining, heavy industry is good. What does decivilized do positively? Because it's just hazard rating. What does decivilized do that's good? 
It's like separate from all the other ones. Increases your pop growth rate. Okay, so maybe that's worth the 200% hazard rating. And we get... Maybe just set up heavy industry here and not care about pollution. Maybe worth... I don't know, it's hard to say. I'll give it a try, because I'd like to keep it in the same system for now. That way we don't have to project power to defend our stuff. You know, everything's local. We can tap the magma place as well. We need to, before we can tap the ultra-rich ore, we need to be able to sustain colony crises? Rumors of pirate raid. There are rumors that a pirate raid targeting your colonies may be organized in the future. If it's successful, they will have reduced stability. It'll be averted if event progress is reduced to 200 points or below. Pirate base in the Gamma Leibniz system. All right, we'll go take that out in a sec. Don't they know we're the ones selling them stuff? <laughs> you would think so. But yeah, maybe the rocky metallic world settle that first and then do the volcanic one once we can afford hazard pay to be permanently on. Thousand people, chat's right. A hundred heavy machinery, 200 supplies. 200% hazard rating. Don't know if it's worth it, but let's go. Uh, we have house cat, stray dog, and <laughs> escaped lion. Negative 5.67% growth rate. Okay. Colony size of three. We're building the spaceport first, so that'll change in a sec. Is it worth hazard paying right now? Probably not. Construction started. Okay. Let's go deal... in the Gamma Leibniz system? I say we just go deal with the pirate now. A third colony chat! Are we biting off more than we can chew? Perhaps, but we need money, and colonies do make money. We just need enough of them. That is the key. Hello? I'm looking for the pirate base. Is anyone home? Wow, you guys have... a lot going on here. Shoo. 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 Nope. Leave. All right, I'm going to take the Paragon in for this one. Going to be Paragon, both the Eagles and the Aurora. And then just some point defense. Should be fairly straightforward in that. That seems a bit high tech for a pirate station. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Thanks, Super VDF, for hanging out. Catch you next time. But yeah, that's a very high-tech station. Um, that worries me. Yeah.
You guys worry me. It's using its super shields. Am I gonna get wrecked? All right, kind of have to wait until they stop using Fortress Shield. Because we're not really having any effect whatsoever, I don't think. Um, Eagle? Bro? You might want to maneuver jet and back off. Chow, this, can they use Fortress Shield? Like, indefinitely? I'm confused, dude. Their flux is not going up, man. All right, there we go. Now we got an opening. All right, you can just retreat. I don't trust you. Did you hear me? I told you to retreat. Hello? The arrow points that way? Go away? Dude! Dude, just leave. You almost died for no reason. The shield is generated by the two triangles close to the center of the station. Oh yeah, they just have a separate flux. I don't know if I'm actually doing damage to anything or not. I'm just kind of stuck on this side. I'm waiting for my turn. This one spins painfully slow. It's good for defense. I see shield, I shoot shield. Okay, you know what? I'm happy with that. We uh, lost 10 crew due to some negligence, but otherwise it's okay. And that is pirate base destroyed minus 60. We have averted the pirate crises for now. Colony presence and instability is an issue. Okay, good job. Stupid nerds. You're gonna have to rebuild now. Strike a liability only against stations. It's good in the rest of the combat. It's only exploded once. The the wolves and the tempest seem to be more. I think like mid to late game, the frigate AI and the pilots just needs to be a little less aggressive. Even the aggressive pilots just need to back off. Like, they just, I think there just needs to be a prioritized survival over all else, unless there's a specific execute order or something, you know? Because I know they're capable of escaping. They just decide not to. They have no self-preservation instincts. <laughs> okay, we got ourselves a spaceport. 69% uh, accessibility, 6, per six stability, no growth at all. And uh, way station is another 10% accessibility. Or 
or I can just add the heavy industry. But that's 500k. <laughs> that's where I want it, though. I need money. Fuel production would also be good. Because we do make... Uh, volatiles. They're both really expensive. Hazard pays minus 20k. Woof. Alright, chat. We just need a little bit of cash to invest. Okay. Here's what I think we do. Is it time to make the Morta Trek? 20, 20 light years. I don't know if it's worth. Megaport? No, not here. Definitely no Megaport here. I think what we have to do is... I th I'd say we start with fuel and try to get positive income. And then just before we run out of money. Fuel production. This facility produces starship fuel, the lifeblood of interstellar civilization. Lacking domain tech components, fuel production is laborious and slow. It'll demand heavy machinery and volatiles. We need to be able to make our own heavy machinery. So heavy industry does do that. They'll just need to import. But let's do fuel production first. Go for it. <laughs> My money. <laughs> now we only have 96k in the bank. So here's the new plan. Okay. We go to Stray Dog. How long is that going to take? 120 days. Woof! But yeah, the patrol HQ will generate their own patrols, destroyer, based on what you have researched and your ship works and stuff. Okay, chat. How do I use high value prisoners again? What's the what's the best way to do it? I have ten just sitting in the bank. And uh why don't we just take some guns? Let's say any guns we have more than like eight of. Or in this case, let's say 16. We're gonna do a purge. We're gonna tap into the well. Hundred and six Vulcans. <sighs> this is an insane amount of gear that I am still going to continue to hoard. <clears throat> 18 broadsword LPCs. <laughs> That's funny. And we got some uh, blueprints that I'm going to use. Maybe I should sort these out. Am I going to use this, Sarissa? I don't hate it. Thunder, Kopesh. I don't know. I like having blueprints so I have options. Even if the options are weird. I love porting way too many guns. Me too. Open comms directory, go to special actions or something at any other faction base, and then trade prisoners. Is it the same value at every spot? We 
could just go buy metals from the Zumu and sell them to both. That's a pretty good deal. They go from 28 to 38 k a piece. Do you get rep rep two? Both is the goofiest name. I know, dude. It is. But yeah, I'll I'll choose cash if possible. We need to get our astral class to speed up and our Prometheus to speed up. They're slowing us down, man. I need to build some ship mods in. I also need to stand up. I'm dying gamer death. Oh. I'm dying gamer death, chat. It's too late for me. Save yourselves. What did I come here? Metal? 6,700 metal. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll keep buying if you keep selling. I know I need money for that. Chad, am I going to sell? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold up. Order of operations. Sell the stuff I have, then buy the supplies. Gotta do it in the right order. And yeah, I'm just gonna sell on the open market. Here you go. Um, not the dudes, but the guns. It's only 58k? Okay, the broadswords brought the price up. Com directory. Station command. Wait. Com directory. Who? Special actions or something? What? Oh, special functions. Prisoner actions. Collect a ransom. Or get a rep boost. All right, let's just go all in on money. <laughs> Is that a Nexarellin or a vanilla thing? I freaking love money! That's Nexarellin. Alliance vote. War! <laughs> dude. No! Look at the stats, dude! My size, 11. Your size, 9. Their size, 97. Absolutely not, man. What are you thinking? Got a death wish? We're, we got more juice than Tri- Tritachians basically been eradicated. They went to war with Hegemony even though they used to be in alliance with them. The it, This is a completely random rolled universe and the Hegemony just... It's kind of like when you do A Historical in Hearts of Iron and... You just have uh, Germany take over Europe anyway. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. Okay, 20 is a little too much, probably. We'll buy most of it. Alright. <clears throat> I got more space if I want. <sighs> oh. I didn't see this trade. Blue Ox to the Pirates is a crazy trade, and it's inside of our system right now. 
We just have to go a little back and forth. So it should only be a matter of time before we actually start making a little bit of money off our colonies. The mega ports are coming in, which will have a little accessibility boost. The uh, new fuel's coming in. We cut our earnings, or our losses, I guess, by 60%, which is also good. All right, there's no way I'm going to be able to sneak in the blue ox. They are, this is way too busy. I'm just going to buy legit. Okay, yeah, just buy a legit. I wish there was something else here worth. Well, I guess I can... Go ahead. It's not a great deal, but I'm just going to buy that, too. And we're going back to Zumu. I am the friend. I am apparently friend of the pirates. Unless you are harassing my system. And then... I will have to destroy you. The only way to make money is selling the pirates. In this circumstance. It's the only way. In most circumstances, actually, in Star Sector. It's the only way. You do what you gotta do. Take that. Take that. Take a little bit of that. Cool, 520k. Alright, we're back. We're back. Feels good. There's a couple bounties that are decently close. This one is still pretty scary because it's an onslaught and a legion. This one's just three Atlas super freighters. It's not that's pretty easy. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how much more time's left. Nine days on the spaceport. I should buy fuel while I'm here. Chat, how's your Friday? How was it? I guess it's kind of over now, huh? <laughs> Not here. It's only 11 p.m. here. It's still Friday in Vegas. My transponder was off. My apologies, officer. It won't happen again. Just walk the dogs. Morning or night? Chill time this evening. Did some D&D &D and just forgot to go to sleep. That was me last night. I was like, I'm going to go to sleep early tonight. <laughs> Two hours later. Oops. Got distracted, punk. I waited six and a half hours to fix my air conditioner. Oof. Air conditioner going out is uh, never a fun time. Fifty days remaining. A yellow primary star. That could be either of these. Near a barren world. Megaport! We got 139% access now because it's a plus 80% accessibility bonus, whereas the regular spaceport is plus 50. So they're getting some massive accessibility bonuses. So they can import more stuff. And as a result of importing more stuff, hopefully make more money, because there'll be less shortages. So House Cat will be the exact same. Dude, 73k credits a month! Because you went up to like 100% accessibility there, because we got the Megaport. High gravity is kind of tough, because the accessibility debuff is rough. Um, 
But this mining and refinery plant is making the dough, dude. All right, so what you're saying is start hazard pay here. Take 40k off, but get some growth back. Maybe? That way we can start pushing up to the next level. Somebody's got to have a ship works. Somebody, somebody's got to have heavy industry. Who's it going to be? I put it in the title <laughs> of the stream. I didn't realize how difficult it was going to be. But we did get a third colony set up, so that's nice. Okay, they're supposed to be near a barren world. It could be this. Quite far away. Nobody reads the title? That's true. Nobody reads the title. If they did, I wouldn't get asked the same question a hundred times. Somebody's here. Dude, that's a big fleet. I think we can handle it. It's just a big, it's just a chunky fleet. There's a lot going on there. Definitely need the capitals. Both of them. But I also want a few more support ships this time, so I definitely want to... Oh, dude, why is this Omen's combat rating so far down? Let's get the Hyperion, the Tempest, the Scarab. Okay, hold... One of the omens. I would like to get two of my nice destroyers out. Alright, hold both the omens. So we can get <clears throat> both the medusas. We're out of deployment points for now. Uh, let's see. Tempest needs to go with somebody. You ride with one of the Medusas. Wolf, you ride... with the other Medusa. Okay. Chat, before we do this fight... I'm gonna take a quick gamer death break. Hyperion's 15? Yeah, that is a lot, huh? It was 15? Is it because of demods or something? I wasn't paying attention. I wouldn't have deployed it if I was looking at that. Alright, give me one sec. I gotta take the dog out. I'm gonna die gamer death if I don't stretch. I'll be right back.
Okay. Let's do this. <sighs> Big battle. Big battle. I believe there are three Atlas modified super freighters. Who just bonked? Do we not get any additional deployment points? I guess not. Okay. Why are you guys all hovering down here? Why are they all like, all my cruisers in my capital are just like, We gotta kill that one frigate, dude! in order to try to organize everybody. All right, what's up, big nerd? I'll start with you as my first target. One down, a lot more to go. <laughs> May as well take the comm relay, but I'm gonna get the wolf to go do it. Murder that guy, murder that guy, engage that guy, and engage that guy. Start with the weenie, get the little kite. Bring all the fighters back. Um, okay, we're gonna have a problem here in a second called, I'm gonna die. It's a bit of an issue. It's a small problem. No, I'm fine. Never mind. Never mind. We're good. Very much alive, actually. Alright, I'm sending some fighters in. The eagle is not going to have anywhere to go in a second. That dude just, that, those super freighters kind of just murdered my group, I feel like. And also, are we just going to chase this dude all around the map? I guess so. Alright, we need to help this eagle out. He's about to get himself killed.
Uh, chat, we may have a problem. Their three Alice Super Freighters right now are kinda annoying. And if they combine their powers against me, I'm kinda dead, dude. We got one thanks to leveraging the Paragon. <sighs> so that's nice. You guys can just relax on that one. I want to engage this guy. I just don't need six of you to do it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I need the uh, Paragon to just be a gamer. That's a lot of bombs, bro. This is the part where I go ahead and reset my flux levels. Get them. Get them. All right. We're pushing the advantage, which I respect. It's getting a little chaotic back, back behind, but I think we keep doing our thing up front. Oh, the eagle. No, the eagle. Okay, well, we took a casualty. Overloaded him? Oh, he's screwed. <laughs> yeah, hit him with the nukes. All right, all of their giant ships are out. This dude's trying to go for a little sneak attack. <clears throat> we gotta engage you. That guy's gotta get engaged. That guy's gotta get eliminated. That guy's gotta get eliminated. I got 20 deployment points because my eagle died. That's embarrassing. Um, Bring in the fury. Falcon <laughs> dueling the Paragon. Yeah, he's, uh... Got a plan, I guess. Okay, I think we win now. We lost a cruiser, but honestly, it was just a spicy show. Could have been worse. Because when those three atlases p rolled in, <laughs> they had enough guns between them. If they had all focused the same target, they probably could have cracked open one of our battleships if they, like, all coordinated. Which, to be honest, is kind of realistically how I would expect pirates to be a little disorganized and not necessarily all focus fire.
Bye, I guess. See you later. Rest in peace, Eagle. Is this the same person who always gets killed? It is, dude. This one pilot keeps getting me killed. They keep losing their eagle. It's 150. It's not the other eagle. It's always them. It's this one aggressive pilot. We recovered 28 crew. That's okay. No long-term damage to the eagle. We just repair it. Good as new. There's the Atlas Mark II. Kind of crazy, though. And that was a 220k bounty. Vengeance Fleet Level 2 launching in 20 days. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, let's start heading home. I kind of want an Atlas. I've got regular Atlases. I don't have the Mark IIs. The pirate, crazy pirate versions. We got 730k in cash, that's not bad. If we could just start making like profit per month, then we could actually afford to start sprawling. Like, it's 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 the spiral that really makes the colony building. As in, uh, not spiral, but like, you know, when, when, when you're like, okay, three colonies is good, but four colonies is better. Four colonies is good, but five colonies is better. And it just sort of snowballs. Yeah, the snowball. I guess would be the right phrase. Where they just start building upon one another. Special task group? Dude, we got some Tritachian allied fleets in the system helping protect. This is my buoy, by the way. Not yours. My nav buoy. Okay. Um, so... We're starting some pop growth back on House Cat. Escape Lion's got a bunch of time left. And then <clears throat> Stray Dog is like 69% growth. Okay. Not bad. Part of me wants to just settle another planet immediately, but I don't think I have money for that. Because I would want to build here. The hazard rating is scary, but the think of the ore, chat. Think of the ore, dude. Dig deep and greedily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Who who did this? Another nav buoy? Where are they? I don't understand how they're taking control of it. It's just kind of annoying. So establish a colony's another thousand people, a hundred heavy machinery, and two hundred supplies. Accessibility of sixty nine percent. Ultra rich and ultra rich. Do it. We got Escape Lion, and this is going to be the, uh... <sighs> we got, we got the, the House Cat. Stray Dog. Escape Lion. Is it an extremely hot planet? Yeah, it is an extreme hot planet. Uh, what do I need to be prepared for with that? And Extreme Tectonic. I bought the game years ago after watching it, and I binge every time you stream it. Thanks again. Hey, glad you're having fun with the game, RN Force.
the um, the wall scorpion. What's like? Hold on. I know what needs to be done. Okay, here's here's AI suggestions, chat. Let's see if their AI is smart or stupid. My prompt was my planet names are stray dog, house cat, and escape lion. Using these examples, name a volcanic planet. Here's his ten suggestions. Crimson Fox. That's not in the same ballpark. Fiery Serpent. Alright, you over to Inferno Wolf. I mean that sounds like a cool band name. Uh Lava Panther. All right, Ember Hawk, Blazing Rhino, Pyro Elephant, <laughs> Magma Bear, Scorch Tiger, and Volcanic Dragon. You just use the word in the word. Middle schoolers name ideas. These sound like Mega Man bosses. Red Hamster. Okay, fine. Red hamster. Now, I don't have enough uh, crew to keep my ship's combat ready. So my combat readiness is rapidly dropping. Oh, that's not good, because the Vengeance Pirate Fleet just launched. I'm not going to worry about um, money. I'm just going to hire people local. They're so expensive! This is the most expensive spot that I could have possibly paid. I hope I'm stimulating the economy right now. Fifty K. Why don't we ever get deals here? You guys have the worst prices on everything. It's supposed to be a trade hub. Sleeper cells. The Ludic Path is on the prowl. So I'll have to pay that fifty K out. <clears throat> Alright, anyway, time to repair. Get everybody's combat readiness up. The pirates are hunting us down. I'm losing tons of supplies. Well, we got four planets here. For whatever that's worth. Curious how big the level two pirate vengeance fleet is. You bastards. Diplomacy shots fired. Persian League and the Byzantine Empire are now hostile. What? Unconfirmed news reports have arrived of a shootout between forces of the Persian League and the Byzantine Empire near Umu. At the time of this writing, a state of war exists between the two factions. What? We're at war? The Eternal Vel Fellowship voted to declare war on the Femtotech Guild. Um... The Ludic Church is abstaining. I'm at war with the Persian League and the Sindrian Dicta. Me and Tritachian. How big is the Persian League and Sindrian Dicta right now? How do you see their size? Quote unquote. I don't even know how to make good diplomacy. I don't know how to use diplomacy. So uh, we're actually at war for the first time. You found out you were at war via Twitter. 
<laughs> like, I don't even know how to interact. Yeah, I'm not really sure. <sighs> Deeks is very war weary. How do you, where do you see that? War weariness, 6,700. They may be amenable to negotiating peace. How do you interact with them? As far as I know, the first one was your diplomacy profile and you can set things there. Oh, we're just like in the middle. The hegemony is militarist, hierarchical, so is it beneficial to be aligned with them? I can see our disposition. Ludic Church is minus, Ludic Paths a ton, Persian League's minus a bunch. So we're predisposed for, for the hegemony to love us, basically. Yeah, this is all more detailed than I am capable of understanding off the top. I love that we have the best relationship with the hegemony somehow. <clears throat> I don't know how to see the actual faction strengths. So we're not at war with the Ludic Church. But we are at war... Why am I not on the list of enemies? I don't know. Who just sub? Tim Fish says, I like this game. <laughs> What up, Tim Fish? This game is fun. This game is cool. If they try to invade a certain planet, if you do it fast enough, you can request a defense fleet. I just wanted to mind my own business. I got a pirate vengeance fleet that I'm dealing with here. Oh yeah. Monthly expenses were from all the hires that I just did. Okay, Red Hamster Spaceport is built. Now we're just gonna add mining to tap into the ultra rich. Hostility with other factions is bringing our access down everywhere. Conquest mission, Umu. Faction, hegemony, current reward, 1.5 million. <laughs> I mean, are we not already at war with them? I don't think I can take control of Umu, though. That's like Persian turf, man. That would be pretty funny, though, if I could. But yeah, they have like a lot of... They have a lot of fleets there. Does anybody play next enough to know what you're supposed to do in this circumstance? Do I just chill? I can't... I can't, like, win. I have one fleet. I don't know how to not be at war. I don't even know how to interact with them. <laughs> Diplomatically. Distress call from the strange real system.
I'm gonna go in there and see what's going on. See if I can sneak in. So, Persian League is neutral. So who am I at war with? Was it Sindri and Dikta? The Remnant are conducting a raid? Targeting the Sindri and Dikta. Interesting. Important conquest victory. Hegemony diplomacy. Scoreboard. So I'm at 18 population. Sindri and Dikta's at 34. We're number two on diplomacy somehow. I didn't even do anything. But I found the score, so that's cool. So Sentry and Dicta, do they have territory outside of Sword? Or is that it? Are they about to get wiped out? Yeah, the faction tab should show hostilities, but my faction doesn't exist. Sindri and Dicta is allied with Tritachian. But it's supposedly at war with me, which is very confusing. See, like, this says there's a likely hostile fleet right next to that. I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna fly in and see if they're hostile or not. Cause somebody's hostile, I don't know who. I'm a little confused. See, this is hostile, what? But the other Persian League fleets I saw were not hostile, they said neutral. That's so weird. Anyway, this is a Star Fortress, four-star danger level. I don't know if we can do that, can we, chat? Certainly not while all these uh, patrols are around, huh? Why does it say it's a four-star? <laughs> I love the... You can pop that thing. You would need like three Paragons. Paragon can solo it. Ah, uh, the duality of chat. Is that an Alpha Core? Yeah, that's an Alpha Core piloting a super station. You will regret engaging. That <laughs> one guy will die guaranteed. All right, chat. You want to see how stupid this actually is? I'm pretty sure we're going to get smoked. Um, but I made a copy of the save so that I could show you that I will not... In, I would not attempt this fight. Well, I definitely wouldn't. I think that's just a regular patrol. Oh, they have a whole... F Where is this fleet coming from? That fleet over there? What's up, you? What's up, you dumb idiot? Why are they neutral, but that's hostile? Another pirate raid.
What am I supposed to do about this? What are you going to do about it? Should I just take these dudes out? Are we at war or not? Like, I'm confused. They just don't know who I am because I'm running around with my transponder off? I don't know. Okay, I don't think we need the big dogs for this. In theory. Where's the other omen? Oh, it's not. It's not ready. They're not hostile with you because they don't know who you are. Then how's the station hostile? The station knows who I am. It can see through me. It knows. lads you know what to do let's go we need to engage and engage Ooh, couldn't quite put him out couldn't quite put him out. I'm not going to be able to catch that Sunder. But I would say we should engage the Sunder as well. What is that, a monitor? Alright, everybody is just backing up. I'm just gonna go for this nerd. Somebody's gotta make a move. And it may as well be me. Catch him on the flank and then push in from the left. Back up a little bit. <clears throat> Reorganize. Why is an eagle redeploying to protect the nav buoy that we have already captured? No one knows. No one knows. He's just thinking real hard, dude. He's thinking real freaking hard, man. Alright, they're getting bundled up. Let's go move in, help him out. Get a little close. Hi. <laughs> Who's bonking me on the tailpipe? Where did this debris come from? All 
right, we're rocking it. All right, bake them away. I'm assuming that we're not declaring war on them and that this is a, this is a lawful act of war that we just caught one of their fleets off guard and uh, we're not creating more problems for ourselves, I'm assuming. But I don't know. I love how the monitor is the last one to die. That's very fitting. Monitors are, oh, are so ridiculously tanky. These damn pirates. Our transponder's not even on. Pirates must have done this. <laughs> and yet, it reduced my rep. Wait, did I lose a... Did I lose a wolf? I did lose a wolf. Ah. And it's got demons. Don't I already have a couple monitors somewhere? Dude, I got a faction bounty. Ten grand received from the hegemony. <laughs> Is that it? Thanks, guys. <laughs> Only 10k. I'm gonna need more than that. Oh, I guess I could salvage that, huh? Not really. I am very much running out of supplies. Big time running out of supplies, chat. I don't think this is gonna go well. But you wanted to see what it was gonna look like, right? Let's see it. <sighs> Can we rate it? I doubt it. Where are these allies coming from? Held in reserve. Where okay, seriously, where are these allies coming from? <laughs> I'm definitely not going to win if these guys are just waiting. Raid effectiveness is 17%. Might be baked into the station. That's cheating. <laughs> Yo, that's cheating, dude. All right, I need to go buy some supplies. Because we're running out. I think that there's so much news on the left, they really need a system where they show you news related to your faction in a different window. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so much pop-up spam. Vengeance fleet, pirate fleet defeated. I don't know who defeated it. But it was defeated. You better run from my flea, you nerds. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the deal. Let's 
Stray dog is 76% growth. House cat is just now starting to grow because we had to turn on hazard pay. Um, escape lion would also need hazard pay, which is crazy expensive. We did get fuel production in. So where's my money? <laughs> is it just now spooling up? It's got to be making more than that, right? Demand is three volatiles? Our mining here is making six. And then this mining has got 27 days left and is already making more <laughs> money <laughs> than the one that's got the fuel production. That's weird. Because right now their commodity is like one fuel and then it has this up. They're profitably exporting one unit of fuel and controls 3% of the global market share. Exports bring in 4k per month. I don't know. And I only got 400k left. Which ain't much. Like, I'm honestly thinking it might be better for me to just stop doing um, hazard pay here. Because I just get so much more money. And we're a little strapped for cash. Probably buy like 1k. We're not a, are we at war with Sindri and Dikta or no? <laughs> I'm unclear. I feel like we are. They were my best trade partner. So rude. Now who am I supposed to trade with? Stinky pirates? But yeah, I'm down to like 300k. And the only way I can make money is to go, like, <clears throat> do some bounties. Which is a pretty good way to make money now. Now that we've stabilized a little bit. Oh my god. Paragon support. Odyssey. Two phase cruiser. Two phase attack cruisers. Oof. Whew. Whew. I don't, I don't think so, dude. This one. This one's doable. This one's real hard, but I don't know. Anyway, yeah, 286k. <clears throat> I'm curious what... Anyway, chat, I need to go. <laughs> I'm not going to have time to... There's no way. I just don't have... I can't figure out how to get money, man. It's just like... I have four colonies. I have four freaking colonies now, dude. Are we profitable yet? No. We're not profitable. I kind of want to see what the month payment looks like. We have a past obligation. It's time to take out a new obligation to fund the colonies. Maybe.
These stupid, these hyper lanes are always in the way, dude. Got to e burn to get out. Making me lose a hundred supplies in a day. Can you make a low tech fleet work? You can. I've, I usually do low tech. This is the first time I've done high tech. If your allied would try tacking, a commission couldn't hurt? Yeah, I don't know how that works exactly. I don't think they'll pay me very much. Peace between Tritachian and Hegemony, yes. I don't know how to do that. Does the AI do it? Do I do it? Who does it? Nobody knows how to play next. <laughs> Is what I've learned. No one knows. Three days remaining? Oh my god. A yellow primary star. That could be this. I have survey data here. It's probably this one. Did it say barren world? Alright, it's gotta be this one. Maybe we make it in time? Possibly. If this is the one that they're at? Well, they're not here. There is another barren world, though. So I may not get the bounty. And we may have come up here for no reason. There is an Omega Flea here, though. Okay, bring it on in. Yeah, why is the Hyperion 15? All right, let's keep the Paragon out for now. with you wolf with you point defense with you omen with you omen with you Missing an omen. All right, one big fight, Chad. One big fight for a bunch of money. We got this, I think, maybe. I'd like to cap the other nap buoy. Wow, they're like so much faster. Or they just start closer, I don't know which. Okay, let's eliminate them. Let's say engage the Sunder, eliminate the Shrike, and engage the support buffalo. I gotta drive through the stupid cloud, it's gonna slow me down. But yeah, low-tech fleets are fun. Lots of boom boom, lots of missiles, get up in people's faces, armor tank. It's a good time. Don't worry guys, I'm on my way. I'm 
I'm coming. I'll be there in no time. <laughs> I can support the team. <laughs> Too close. I might need some help here. Guys, did you notice that you've committed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ships to killing one Buffalo Mark II? Did you notice that? I don't know if you noticed that. Alright, we got another missile barrage on this nerd. Put a dent in him. Go ahead and recall everybody. Eh, we're in a better position. Asher, you're a little out of your depth, bud. <laughs> I love I love when just like a stupid little frigate comes out. <sighs> We're gonna need to engage the dominator. We need to work on engaging all of the dudes on the edges. Kind of closing the vice around it, basically. Uh oh. I gotta take my shields down real quick. God. We need some help. I need some help. So were they. I believe. <laughs> you intercepting. <laughs> that was not meant for you. Okay. This turned a little chaotic. We did lose a nav buoy. It is getting a little spicy in here, but... I'm just gonna keep taking out the little weenies. Holy wall of text chat. What is that? Okay, it, it was a little touch and go here. Excuse me. Look, Aurora, you gotta move, dude.
Oh, this guy is super dead. You guys are doing pretty good now. You're doing pretty good. We need to engage the big guy. We need to engage this dude. Ooh, he's coming back in. All right. I applaud your absolute foolishness. Over committing big time, buddy. He just cruised right in the middle of everybody. Fire a will! <laughs> I think that's it. We. Yeah, it was a little touch and go. We just lost the Shrike. One Phase Strike frigate got away. Come back to me, Shrike. Come back to me. Your work isn't finished. 288k. All right, we're back into green. We're back into green, chat. Red Hamster is making 6500 a month. Okay, so it's not a ton, but hey, look, you gotta get money from somewhere. The accessibility being down is probably the issue. We're like at war, and I gotta go. I'm out. That was a good final battle to put us back into a comfortable position of over half a mil. And uh, four colonies. We made two more colonies today. We're not making a profit yet, but we're quite close to making a profit. Which will be a lovely change of pace. Because I'm tired of grinding to make money. Chatters, we'll see you guys again on Monday. I'm sleepy. I'm gonna send you off. Let's go say what's up to Sim. He's playing some Bellatro. Has been enjoying it. I'm tired. I'm hungry. It's yep time here. Happy yep time, everybody. I hope you had a nice, fun week. Hope you have a great weekend. And I hope you enjoyed the streams this week. And if you only saw this one, I hope you enjoyed this one. But yeah, it's been fun. Fanta says, started playing Star Sector with Nex yesterday. Starting system fight between Tritachian and Hegemony. First time I salvage, I get an onslaught. How are you going to use it, though? Anyway, night night, everybody. Uh, the Star Sector run has been fun. We'll do something else next week. Find some more new games to play. Keep trying some new stuff. Pacific Drive has been fun. I just don't think I can finish it on stream. It just got to the point where, like, the grind... It, it started to become less fun to stream because the grind... I ran. I feel like I've run out of things to talk about. Which kind of hit that point in Star Sector, too. Because we've kind of hit the end game in Star Sector, more or less. So I want to find some, some new stimulating stuff. I mean... Six episodes is still a lot for Star Sector, regardless. I think it would... It was a little disheartening to see the Hegemony just one, <laughs> I guess. Maybe I need to install more mod factions. All right, good night, everybody. Have fun over at Sims Channel. Toss them a follow if you haven't already. I'll see you guys again in a couple days. Have a good weekend. Good night. Goodbye. Get out.